Azuku Midoriya is born in a world full of quirks or superpowers. Superpowers that change the one's body a far, far margin. These quirks are seen as a testament of the entirety of society. Without a good quirk, you really don't do much in life. And there's a good chance that you will never get a good quirk. Children may hope that they get a special quirk that would allow them to be heroes. A special quirk that would allow them to be, well, different. But that's not always the case. Quirks in this world sometimes are detrimental. Sometimes are horrible. But at the same time, sometimes they build someone's character. Someone that is fiery. Someone that is angry all the time may have an aggressive quirk. Some people may vary on their quirks and their personalities. And Azuku Midoriya would find out relatively quickly and his personality would shape relatively fast when he learns of his quirk. His quirk would be known as foresight, something that they would dignify similar to a pro hero, but not knowing that it's not necessarily exact or not necessarily even similar to that said pro hero by the name of Sir Nidai. And during the doctor's visit, Azuku doesn't know much more than just that. He doesn't know much more than just that it's similar to Sir Nidai's. But when he begins to actually use this quirk, his eyes begin to change a shade of magenta or purple. When he begins to look at his mother, his eyes fully change and actually stay that way the entire time and don't change at all. Those green eyes that he originally had no longer exist. He stares at his mother and it's like he can see every pathway she is likely to choose. It's as if he can see every choice that she's going to do. She, she begins to work on dinner, looking around, making things, and it's odd. While she does this, Azuku can accurately predict exactly what she's going to make, what pattern she's going to make it, and then eventually what the end result will be. And that's, well, the food catching on fire. Azuku brings that up and says something about that she shouldn't add this or that, or she should pay attention to this to prevent a fire from happening on the food. And Inko thinks that he's just overreacting, or basically doesn't know what he's talking about, at least initially, until the food erupts in flames. And yeah, well, she kind of misstepped an ingredient and kind of added something without realizing it, catching the food on fire, which is a wild, wild thing to happen, especially your son predicting it. With that said, she begins to kind of run her life through Azuku. I mean, she's not basically relying on him, relying on him, but she is definitely thinking about, well, really, really hard decisions and asking him for advice. Azuku, as he grows up, becomes extremely popular in school, out of school, etc., etc. His eyes seem to be basically a cool thing for the girls and for the guys. The guys think that his quirk is sick. I mean, someone that could basically see the future, that's awesome. In which, that's not necessarily what the foresight quirk is, but to them, that's what they believe it to be. Azuku continues to basically work on this quirk and his intelligence would skyrocket. It's as if this quirk alone has enhanced his intelligence tenfold. So at the age of like six or seven, he's reading, writing and all of that at an 11th grade level, or I guess it would be what year, year 11 level because they're in Japan. But he's extremely intelligent and he'll only get more intelligent as he goes along as if he absorbs knowledge in a matter of seconds and he can basically foresee all the answers and, and understand equations in a matter of seconds, which is something that makes school and stuff like that extremely easy for him, something that he'll, won't, he won't even try on in the future. Azuku feels cocky in a way, feels self-absorbed now to the point that he feels that he's better than everyone. I mean, he kind of is, right? 
Azuku feels that he's just levels above his classmates and that there is no touching him. There's really nothing that they can do. Azuku would quickly pass through all of these learning exams and so on and so forth, just cruising on through school. But his quote-unquote friend, which in this, they're really not friends, Katsuki Bakugo, doesn't really like Azuku. Frankly, they th he thinks he's too high for his bridges, and he thinks that he's basically thinks that he's better than everyone else. But Bakugo, in a way, thinks the same thing. Bakugo thinks that he's better than everyone else, so what is he to say against Azuku for believing the same thing? Azuku would get into some scuffles with Bakugo, but at the age of 12 years old, and basically heading into middle school, he would have a, the most serious scuffle he's ever had with him. It would lead to them actually fighting with their quirks. Bakugo would get so pissed off that he felt that Azuku was taking all the attention and also taking all his quote unquote friends or entourage. And Azuku would tell him that he doesn't care about no entourage. He doesn't care about any of these people, frankly, so he can have them back. He doesn't need people that are useless. And if Bakugo needs people that are useless, well, that says a lot about him. After he says this though, Bakugo becomes storming at him, shooting explosions, but Azuku would immediately dodge, 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 and as he slips through all the explosions, not a touch on him, he lands a punch to his stomach that sends shockwaves through Bakugo's body, making him cough up blood a little bit. Azuku would, would grab Bakugo by the shirt and drag him off and throw him on the chair right outside the nurse's office. He would squat down slightly and shake his head, telling Bakugo that he'll never be able to touch him because he sees everything. He walks away as Bakugo is still kind of whimpering and hunched over, extremely hurt to an extent. Azuku thinks to himself that as long as he has these eyes, as long as he can foresee everything, he doesn't need anything. He doesn't need help. He doesn't need what's it? He doesn't need training. This will be just a breeze, a, a straight breeze. So the next three years, frankly, he doesn't do much training. Yeah, he utilizes his quirk. So to an extent, that would be kind of quote unquote training. But he doesn't use his quirk to the most extent that he possibly can. He doesn't train his own body to the extent that he possibly can. He's already fit and he feels like, oh, it doesn't really matter because no one can hit me anyways. And on top of that, he's, he already can see all of these martial arts on, on YouTube and stuff like that on screens. So what's the point? I mean, he can learn all of it at a touch of his finger. And that's exactly what he does. But the difference is there is no mastery of something you've never performed. Yeah, he might be able to utilize it somewhat, but he won't be able to use a lot of, utilize it to the extent that he believes he will be able to. With that said though, his the end of middle school would quickly approach and the teacher would begin to tell everyone that he's going he was going to give everyone a little bit of work applications to basically see where they wanted to go and what they wanted to do. But he knows all of them want to go the hero route. The hero route is something that Azuku has made apparent that's all he's going to do. And he he doesn't want to do it necessarily because he wants to quote unquote save people, but he just wants to show everyone that he could be greater than well, all might. He wants to be the best. That's all he wants to do. He wants to be better than all might himself. Azuku wants to basically be the new number one hero, but do it his own way. Of course, he takes inspiration from All Might, and he wants to save people too. But at the same time, this quirk he has can do far more than what, what All Might could do. That's what he truly believes. Azuku will listen to the teacher as he speaks, but would kind of ignore him at the same time here and there. The teacher would eventually say that Azuku Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugo are trying for UA, but Bakugo makes a remark saying that Azuku won't even get in because he's heard something. In the practical exam of the UA entrance exam, they gotta fight robots. Azuku is nowhere near strong enough to break through robots or pure steel. You'll need something like Bakugo's quirk, an explosion quirk, something that could truly hit hard. 
Azuku looks at Bakugo with a weird with a weird glance and says that he'll do what he needs to do to figure it out and that he'll he'll still end up being number one in that exam. Bakugo stands up and slams his hand on Azuku's desk, asking him if that's a challenge. Azuku says that a challenge is between two people of equals, two people that it would actually matter that the other person would have a chance. But Bakugo has no chance, so this is no challenge. Immediately, Bakugo is about to punch him in the face, but the teacher tells him to sit down and stop, or he'll get in serious trouble. Bakugo sits down, and eventually the day would proceed on and finish up. Azuku would think about what Bakugo said. Of course, extreme, it would be extremely difficult to destroy robots, especially in the state he is currently. I mean, he has nothing that really makes him extremely strong strong. Is he able to counter punch and basically easily track down anybody and destroy and basically knock out anybody he wants because frankly he sees everything coming in a matter of seconds of course of course but at the same time azuku knows that it's more it, it's more to hero work and more to fighting than just seeing everything that's ahead he needs strength power he needs to be able to take a punch if he cannot dodge a punch after this realization Azuku begins training. Yeah, finally. He begins actually working out and put, putting himself through pain. It's odd for him. When he begins to train, he, he schedules out a perfect regimen, something that is ideal for himself and actually perfectly executable in which he's able to basically retain as much muscle as possible, but at the same time retain as much speed as well. Azuku would continue training and eventually he would hear about something on the news a couple days after his training whatever or after his training would continue or begin um, Azuku would see on the news that the sludge villain actually was all out and about and he was captured by all might himself but that was after he actually captured somebody but luckily all might was there to save him and it was basically a perfect coincidence and was able to handle what happened. Azuku continues to watch on the screen, and his mom comes in saying that that happened a couple days ago, it's just old news, they like repeating themselves a lot. Azuku continues to watch, but he sees something. He looks closely. That person in the sludge villain, he doesn't know him, but he does know the person that's charging into battle to help the person that is in the sludge villain. That's Bakugo. He's shocked. Bakugo has a heart? Why would he do that? I mean, I feel like he's the type of guy to just let the guy die. Whatever. Azuku wouldn't think much about it, but it's definitely something that needs to be kept in mind. Azuku would continue training for the next 10 months. Frankly, not really needing to study or anything like that. He would memorize and basically condense everything in a matter of, well, a day easily. So Azuku would have no problem with that enter or with the with the written exam and would easily pass that with flying colors. When he heads over to the UA entrance exam after the training the, the 10 month period, Azuku would easily, like I said, finish the written portion of the exam. The written portion is easy breezy and frankly, nothing to really think about. Azuku would then wait though and he would reveal something that he's been actually using recently and been using for the last maybe month or so and that's some weaponry of course he gets the weaponry cleared by ua and basically the people that run it but um yeah he begins to use some weaponry he feels that the use of weaponry the extra strength that he put on and obviously some tampering himself that he did to the weapons would allow him to absolutely destroy everything in front of him. And when they would line up at the gates, Azuku could already see the perfect path pathway for himself, seeing that he should take certain directions to destroy certain robots. When he begins to look, he begins to wait, and when the gates swing open, he takes off. Everyone believes that he's just some normal dude with a certain powers in his eyes but his speed is pretty insane 
it seems that he's increased his just physical attributes by a lot so, and over that last 10 months and gotten into, into peak peak condition and now he begins to slice and dice all the robots he sees using different weaponry he currently has slicing through them with a giant smirk on his face just as he thought just as he foresaw he knew that there were some hurdles to be handled in this regard but he handled them swiftly and easily frankly with no sweat at all azuku handled these little issues that he may or may not have ran into in a matter of just you know 10 months 10 months for him to add a little bit more to his repertoire he realized something maybe just maybe he did have some things to learn maybe he could add and excel even more maybe he could be even better than what he already was Azuku continues to destroy and obliterate every robot he sees with his blade. As he does so, he does feel an odd sensation throughout his hands and onto the blade, as if the blade itself is getting stronger. He's not so sure. Maybe this is something that he'll have to look into later, but it's not something he'll, well, he knows anything about. But still, he continues to obliterate what he can and do, and eventually he would get to the point where he'd feel comfortable, very comfortable, about where he was. Azuku would then head off and begin to leave kind of the area, at least to an extent, but eventually he would hear the cries of somebody near him. A girl is stuck under rubble, and just as she, she is stuck under this rubble, well, another robot is appearing this robot is the zero pointer and he remembers back to present mike telling them to avoid it of course azuku thinks that this is no empty threat the zero pointer must be really serious if they're being told to avoid it entirely in which of course it is it is no empty threat so he decides you know what using the power he has and the strength he has He's, he foresees something in his own future, looking ahead, and he's looking ahead to see that he'll a be able to save this young girl, or to save this girl by the name of Ochako Uraraka, in which he does just that, breaking all of the rubble near her, grabbing her and running off with her, making sure that she's good to go. But he doesn't say another word to her, not saying a name, not saying anything. He doesn't necessarily care about the, well, about anything or care about her i mean he doesn't necessarily want to really worry about oh if she's okay or not frankly when you all think about it well azuku most likely knew that this would also give him extra points plus it doesn't look too good to see a girl on the entrance exam well die so he decided to save her maybe he'll get a taste of being a hero early this time around of course, he would, tr or they would try to talk to him. Ochako would try, and also others as well, but he wouldn't say a word. They've heard, or many of the teachers have heard rumors of what his quirk is, and seeing it on full display definitely confirms it. But Izuku doesn't want to talk to anybody. He heads home, and he waits for the letter to arrive. Azuku is still in a stage of thinking that he's definitely better than everyone else, and frankly, when the UA entrance exam will win the... Yeah, the UA entrance exam letter would arrive and his his acceptance would arrive to UA It would just confirm even more that he was truly the best He would learn that he got number one in the exam and it was by a long shot It was by far and the reason for that is actually saving that girl in which Azuku is pretty shocked to hear But at the same time he kind of predicted this in a way he thought that it would definitely help his score, but he didn't think it would help that much. But to win by a long shot because of that definitely gives him an interesting perspective. Azuku, of course, would, would think more about this in the future, but something needs to actually give. He needs to actually, you know, have a good time, celebrate a little bit, in which him, his mother, and many others do in the wake of Azuku getting into UA as the number one one student 
And while watching the little entrance exam or the little entrance exam acceptance, he actually realizes that he's listening to All Might right now. He turns around because he wasn't even looking at the hologram to see All Might himself. Azuku is pretty interested at the fact that All Might is actually going to be a teacher at UA, wondering if he'll actually be able to teach much. Frankly, All Might seems to be a one-sided hero in Azuku's opinion. Raw power does get you so far, but it seems that All Might it may be a little bit more than just brawn, in which Azuku is interested, definitely interested to see. After some time would pass, Azuku would finally have the first day at UA. UA High School is something that he's been waiting for for a long, long time. And to see where this goes, well, he's excited. In a way, he's has some high expectations for this school. So when he arrives to see a bunch of hooligans and frankly, Bakugo arguing with some blue haired kid, he kind of gets annoyed. Everyone else seems relatively tame, but a couple of them, he questions how they even got in. That Mineta kid, how the hell did he get in? That other girl over there, she's only invisible. How did she get in? He's not so sure. Frankly, he feels like a lot of these people could get replaced and replaced relatively quickly. He even sits there and thinks, how the hell did the invisible girl and the guy with weird hair get in and destroy robots? That makes no sense. Maybe they got recommended or something else, but still, that's kind of ridiculous. And Azuku begins to think that there are far, far, far better options than these people. There's a lot of people here that he feels probably don't even deserve to be at UA at all. Go to they should they should have gone to a low tier high school or something of that that manner. But still, whatever. Azuku sits down and waits, and as he does, someone actually approaches him. It's Ochako Uraraka, and this in a way kind of annoys him. He doesn't want no thanks, he doesn't want any of that, he doesn't want to speak to really her at all. And she basically stutters over her words a little bit and, and it says that it says that she's so grateful, so on and so forth. In which Azuku waves her off, saying that he just did what needed to be done and something that needs to be done as a hero. That's it. He doesn't need really congratulations, he doesn't need a thanks, he doesn't need any of that. Now. He, now, he recommends that she gets better with her quirks so an, instant, an incident does, like that doesn't happen again on the battlefield. Azuku is stern with his words, and she does take him to heart, but does feel kind of sad that he's not, like, you know, happy at all. But, of course, this if they knew Azuku before, this is how he always is, in which Bakugo kind of comments, comments about it, not directly to her, but in general saying that he's always been like that and he's so annoying for it thinking he's cool and thinking he's better than everyone else. Ochako is shocked to hear that they have some relation in which she does slightly ask about it in which Azuku says that this is the last thing he'll answer and that he that they went to school together. That is it. They're not friends. They're not anything other than just classmates. Of course Bakugo says that that is his line that of course they're not friends he'd never be friends with a loser like him but azuku ignores him once again as aizawa their teacher walks in aizawa would tell all of them to shut up and sit down that this is no time for chatter no time for talking he then tells them that he's going to be testing something out he wants to test how strong all of their quirks truly are how strong they truly are so they'll do basically a bit of a quirk assessment test. Some of them ask about orientation, but Aizawa tells them that he can do whatever he wants. He'll do, he will do whatever he wants. So that's exactly what Aizawa is going to do. Host a quirk assessment test and well, they'll find out a bit of a caveat very soon. When they all head out, get on their PE uniforms and get ready for the quirk assessment, Aizawa tells them all that just to be ready for the unexpected. As he says this, he tells the number one student in the UA entrance exam to step up and throw a ball as far as possible, in which he calls up Azuku Midoriya. Azuku cockily walks up, and Aizawa can already tell that he can't stand the kid, being already annoyed at his demeanor and already annoyed at the way he acts. Nonetheless, though, Azuku shrugs it off. 
He then throws the ball and he throws it relatively far. He's been gaining strength relatively, uh, relatively quickly, but he's not a raw power type of person. Azuku even basically says this and says that he might be peak human shape, but at the end of the day, his quirk isn't to have superpowers. He doesn't have some super strength that he, or overall, anything to do with that. So, it's relatively mediocre in the eyes of most. Azuku would walk off as Aizawa would smirk, as it seems that Azuku does know his limitations to a certain extent, but humbling needs to, needs to happen. Humbling is something that Azuku needs to go through. Aizawa is not sure how that would occur because expelling him most likely will just send him off to another school, and Azuku's pride would definitely carry him off to a competitor, so he doesn't want to do it in that way. There has to be another way. Nonetheless, everyone else falls in line, beginning to throw the ball. Bakugo getting a higher score than Azuku obviously sets him off on a bit of a tangent. But like Azuku said before, that doesn't necessarily matter in, in terms of raw strength because that's not Azuku's quirk. Everything goes on pretty similar, and Azuku doesn't even get that high. He gets around the middle of the pack, but like I said, he is a lot stronger and faster than the people that are just kind of normal and don't have these special quirks for these special physical exams. Azuku kind of just goes with the flow. If it was a fight, it would be a lot different. There was a, there's a lot of circumstances that it would be a lot different for Azuku, especially in terms of fighting and IQ. Azuku is a bit of a thinker. Well, definitely a thinker. He'll think so far ahead of you to the point that it feels, well, unfair. But still, Azuku knows what the quirk assessment is, and he continues on with it. People like Bakugo and Todoroki, well, they do pretty darn well. And frankly, that's a pretty obvious thing that's going to happen. Bakugo and Todoroki do really well in the quirk assessment, including some other people as well, and they get at the top of the list. Azuku sitting around number 10. But still, pretty good for Azuku, and Bakugo himself is still kind of high and mighty on the fact that he got higher than Azuku. To the point that it leads to Azuku actually, well, talking smack. And of course he would. I mean, that's just kind of who he is and what he does. He begins to tell Bakugo that it sucks that he couldn't actually be number one in the entrance exam. On top of that, well, let's just say he's always been number two behind Azuku or behind himself. Azuku slightly laughs and Aizawa wants to see how Bakugo reacts because obviously Bakugo has a problem with his temper, an extreme problem with his temper, so he sees Bakugo fly at Azuku, but Aizawa doesn't do a thing. He waits. He's heard about this kid, what he can do, and what he's capable of. Azuku stands still and doesn't do a thing. Bakugo stops in his tracks and and asks Azuku what the hell he thinks he's doing. What if he actually exploded him on the face? Azuku points to, points to Bakugo and shakes his head. It's as if you never learn. I don't see the future, Bakugo. Not at all. I just read the person. See what they're doing. What to expect. And in a way, I can predict what's the most likely outcome. So, you're right. My quirk is very different, and very odd, and maybe in raw power I can't keep up with you at all. But here's the difference. I can see everything you will do before you even do it. Bakugo is stunned by this, as if, is, as if Azuku got into his head so badly that Bakugo knew he wasn't even going to strike Azuku. This is something that makes Aizawa himself smirk. This kid may be cocky, he may be arrogant, but he damn well knows what he's doing. Azuku is someone that is leagues and leagues above everyone around. Of course, Aizawa doesn't want to say this to boost his ego even more, but the kid is special, and he can tell. Very similar to Sir Nidai in the fact of the way he uses his quirk, and very similar to some pro heroes that are so technically sound, like himself, like Aizawa himself, and those who have really brawl or brawlish tendencies are just a thing of the past. The heroes that love to brawl, like All Might, people that love to just use their raw power, may be a thing of the past, especially with the introduction, 
with Azuku. Azuku Midoriya can foresee it all. He'll see through you and he'll make you regret every mistake. Every manner that you decide to walk, the path that you walk, well, he knows it and he'll counter it. Azuku Midoriya may be a future top hero, a future star in the making, but he'll have to get through UA first and he'll have to get through a lot of trials and tribulations before he's truly a contender for the number one hero. So what happens or what will happen next? Well, you're going to have to find out in the next part of What If Deku Had a Foresight Quirk. Azuku Midoriya is ready. Well, at least he feels ready. He then heads to school that same day and he has a little bit of a surprise that he wasn't expecting at all. That's a different bit of training. Training that they weren't, they had no idea that they were going to get. And that training was with All Might. Of course, Aizawa would explain to them that they're going to be doing hero training, but it won't be with him. And as he says this, All Might would come into the door. He would be, everyone would be shocked and be confused that it's, that it's All Might that's really, well, with them. All Might then tells all of them to head outside, get on their, their hero outfits, and get ready for a hero bit of training. Of course, Izuku does just that, but he has a weird feeling. While looking at All Might and just getting a sense of everything, All Might has a connection to somebody in that room. Has a connection to somebody there. Why? Why would he though? Azuku would continue getting ready and getting on his simple outfits. It would be something very, very elegant in a way, but it's something that isn't really that protective, to be honest. He's very reliant on his dodging, very reliant on his skill, so he feels that he's not going to get touched anyways, so there's no real reason. But there's one thing that he wants to keep in mind. He keeps looking around. There might be someone in here that's related to All Might. At least that's the theory he has first. But soon he would realize that to be not exactly the case. There's nobody that's related to All Might there. There's somebody that's the successor of All Might there. They head out and they begin to stand in front of All Might as he explains. And Azuku continues to survey the area until his eyes lock onto one person. And he shakes his head. There's no effing way. He stares at Katsuki Bakugo for a second more as he turns back to All Might. He can tell something. Something between them. No. He realizes something though. That news story not too long ago. The news that he saw about the sludge villain. About Katsuki Bakugo diving head first like an idiot. No way. He, he proved himself? Azuku is shocked, taken back. The hell? If anybody should have the power of All Might, it should be him. But he shakes this off, this idea, relatively quickly. He doesn't need it anyways. He'll beat the brakes off of All Might's little successor, just like how he's always been doing this entire time. Azuku... Doesn't even, doesn't even hear what All Might has to say until it's time to fight. He hears that he's on the hero side with a girl by the name of Ochako Uraka, someone that he saved earlier. And he hears that Bakugo and Tenya Ida are on the other side. Azuku tells her and makes it clear that he wants Bakugo. That he'll take him on and get rid of him quickly. And that's all that needs to be said and done. He puts away his weaponry, believing he won't even need it. Azuku would wait the five minutes of planning and approach the staircase knowing Bakugo, knowing exactly what he'll do. Bakugo comes charging down as he explodes toward Azuku, and as he does, he shoots explosions straight at him. Azuku obviously dodges relatively easily too, landing a couple punches here and there, but he can feel that Bakugo's speed is slightly increasing. But it's odd. It doesn't feel that much different. 
Azuku would bob and weave and eventually get a hold of Bakugo, getting him to the ground and punching him square in the jaw. But just as he does this, a kick would come soaring right to his face, as it barely, barely misses. Azuku steps back and looks at Bakugo and is kind of shocked. Is he overwhelming him? No, 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 no. He's not getting overwhelmed. That's not the case. It can't be. Azuku stands his ground, and it feels like Bakugo's movements are getting sharper, quicker. And as soon as Azuku realizes this, he's able to duck under one punch, but is caught with another, straight to the cheek. He brushes this off, and he smirks. He laughs at Bakugo, saying that he landed one blow, and, that's, and it, he did so much to land one, but he won't land another. Azuku steps up as he dodges multiple punches as Bakugo's fighting style is getting very linear, very predictable. Azuku then lands a punch to the stomach as he kicks him straight to the wall as well, slamming Bakugo's head into the ground as Bakugo seems to be unconscious, out cold. But as Azuku's walking away, all he hears is steps. Bakugo stands up and he shoots a punch at him so strong that when he dodges it, it leaves a giant hole, a crater in the building. The building that they're standing in. Azuku is shocked to see this, and he looks to his side to see that it partially his arm got hit, and it's hurting terribly bad. Partially broken, Azuku looks over to see Bakugo really isn't there anymore. He's out cold. He lands on the ground as, as Azuku grabs his shoulder, and it hurts like all hell. He runs up the staircase to make sure to secure the win, and as they do, he helps Ochako get, uh, basically knock out Tenya, or at least get rid of him for the moment, as they touch the bomb. Ochako asks about his hurt arm, what happened, but Izuku shrugs it off, saying that it's nothing. It was a fault on his own. He didn't, he didn't, he underestimated somebody. He underestimated Bakugo and got hurt. He walked over down back down the staircase as he grabs Bakugo by the back of the shirts, dragging him off. Under his breath, he kind of remarks that Bakugo has earned it. He's definitely showed him something, something else. As, as he's saying this to himself, All Might can hear this, and he smiles as well. All Might writes it down, and then pulls out a phone and begins to text somebody. He begins to text Shota Aizawa. Azuku may not be humbled entirely, but he did realize that there are or there is someone that is extremely strong that may or may not be able to keep up with him. This is something that will drive Azuku, something that will make him want to become stronger, something that they were very worried about. But now it feels that they don't have to worry, at least for the time being. Azuku would help Bakugo get to the recovery girl and leave him there. He would leave as well and head off back to, well, where All Might is as he watches the rest of the fights go on. All Might asks if he should go to Recovery Girl to get that arm healed, but Izuku says that there's no, no reason to do so. It seems that his bones, his body heals relatively quickly. He's not exactly sure how it works, but he then focuses on his arm as it, in, in a way, heals itself but very, very slowly. Over the course of the day, it will eventually heal. Azuku isn't really sure how or exactly why it works, but it's some sort of mystical power in a way. He looks at All Might and says that it has something, or it has to have something to do with the fact that he can kind of look into the future. It's like he can mold his body for the future, accelerating the heal healing process or at least that's the idea or hypothesis he came up with. But still, it's something that's beneficial and something that he needs to learn more about. So these little ticky-tack blows and these hurt injuries, he needs to learn how to, for one, avoid them, but on top of that, heal them himself. As All Might hears this, he nods. He's interested in Izuku. Izuku has basically taken All Might's interest for sure, and he can tell that he really has a good future in hero work, and he knows that he's only going to get better at it. 
Azuku would wait for all the fights to be over and done with as the rest of the school day would go on relatively normal. He would head home and then he would head back to school the next day for a new version of training that he would hear about. He would hear that they're going to the USJ and this is for rescue training, something that Azuku didn't really do much of but believes that it could be a really strong part of his repertoire. Azuku is very interested in what kind of rescue training they're going to be doing as he awaits Aizawa to explain more. He tells all of them what he can and then tells them to head off to the buses. As they do though, Bakugo walks up to Azuku and remarks that he th that Azuku knows, doesn't he? He knows exactly what happened and what is going on. Azuku looks at him and shakes his head. Of course I know. I know everything, right? Azuku kind of smirks at this as he says it, but says that, but then makes a motion with his lips as if he's not going to say a word. Uh, Bakugo, for the first time in a while, or really ever, smirks at a response that Azuku has just said as if he's becoming more comfortable with him, as if they're kind of becoming rivals. Not friends, but rivals. Azuku would sit in the bus as they all speak about who has the strongest of all quirks, but he wouldn't say a word. He didn't care, which was surprising, because normally Azuku would tell all of them that he's head over shoulders better than every single person there, so much more progressed, but no, he didn't care. He was locked in on something else. He was thinking about something else. Azuku would then head head out of the bus but as he would as they arrived at the usj he would look at somebody stare at them and it was as if he could see right through them he stares at the boy by the name of aoyama he's odd he can see something something is coming azuku walks over to aizawa and immediately tells him that that boy right there yuga aoyama He's hiding something. Aizawa's confused. What do you mean by that, kid? As he asks this, Pro Hero 13 comes out, but they step aside and continue talking. Azuku says that he can see most things that are going on. Aiz Aizawa's attempt to basically train them and give them little tests. And on top of that, he can see Pro Hero 13's whole plan for the day. But there's one thing that all of these kids that he's staring at have in common. They're unknowing for what's coming today, but that person right there, they know what's coming. Azuku looks at Aizawa seriously and asks if there's any way he would know what's coming. Azuku stares at Aizawa's face as he could already tell Aizawa has no clue how he would come up with any idea of what's going on today. Azuku nods and he tells Aizawa that they should call for help now. Something bad is going to happen they all walk inside as aizawa makes sure to call for help before they even get inside the area or at least signal for help to an extent getting getting kaminari to do so and before they could walk before they walk in the transmitter and their basically all of their communications are not blocked so when they walk in and they see that the communications are blocked now this is a serious issue Azuku's little theory was correct. He was all he was completely correct about not only the one kid that that basically had an idea of what's going to happen, but on top of that, Azuku knew what was going to occur. Aizawa tells him, Azuku and the rest of the class to get ready that something is about to arrive. A portal opens and a ton of villains do just that. Azuku tells Aizawa that he knows that it's he'll, they'll get in trouble for helping and self-defense is the least they can do. But, just but, he's going to need him on that battlefield. Aizawa, Aizawa nods his head and tells him that, him that 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 himself and Azuku are going to the battlefield. Everyone else make sure to get into little units to protect each other. Azuku and Aizawa drop down as they begin to knock out villain after villain. In terms of the villains that are there, they're nothing compared to Azuku, and frankly, Aizawa would destroy all of them alone. But this makes things about twice as fast, and Azuku isn't going to be touched by a single finger. 
Azuku does, though, have an eye on that main villain, the one with the hands on his face, his body. He's concerned, but he's also interested. What is he? Why is he here? He can foresee the actions that the man will, will take, but on top of that, he can tell that this person has gone through hell and back, as if he was abandoned, destroyed, obliterated, and, well, he's pointing his anger towards someone. Who is that someone? He looks around, and he can tell by the, the basically the attitude of that same man by the name of Shigaraki, he's annoyed. The person he's looking for isn't even here. Or at least, one of them aren't. Azuku helps destroy all of the low-tier villains. They're all gone in a matter of minutes. And, and even Kurogiri couldn't get every single one of the heroes or the future heroes or Class 1A out of the way and put them in different zones. Because of how fast Aizawa and Azuku took out all of the small fry villains. But now... It's, it's Azuku and Aizawa against Shigaraki and Kurogiri. But that's not the only people that are there. Or, well, maybe this isn't a person, more like a monster. Azuku looks as the portal opens up once again, and it walks out, staring daggers into Azuku and Aizawa. And Azuku immediately tells Aizawa that they need to go. That he needs to get out of here now. There is no dodging this monster. That he'll need to he'll need to look 17 steps ahead to make sure he doesn't get touched. Aizawa says that he's not letting a kid fight his battles, but Azuku jumps over toward Aizawa, grabbing his scarf and ripping it off of him as he throws it on top of himself. Aizawa is shocked to see this, and Azuku begins to float the scarves as if he know he knows exactly how they work. Azuku tells him to go now, that he needs to help the other kids get to safety immediately, and that this is the only way they'll win. He, uh, Aizawa looks into the eyes of Azuku as they're glowing that dark, dark purple now, and he knows this to be the truth. Azuku basically tells Aizawa that this is do or die. He needs to be quick, and they need to hope that reinforcements come immediately. Azuku then waits for the Nomu this giant monster to make his move and as he does he slips under the punches as he wraps the scarf around him trying to leverage the monster into basically slamming himself into the ground land punches on himself azuku won't do any damage he knows that but luckily he has some sort of weaponry to at least try and parry some of these attacks he slams his sword on the fist of the nomu but it shatters into pieces yeah that that version of his little well, plan went to shit real quick. Azuku continues to dodge, but he knows that if once Shigaraki and Kirogiri decide that they want to enter this fight, and let's just say it seems that Azuku has run out of time. A portal opens up right next to him as a hand presses through it. Azuku is able to dodge, but as he does, he sees a giant fist about to connect with his face. Yeah, Azuku may have foresaw most things, but this is overwhelming. The amount of things going on all at once, the lack of speed that he has currently at this moment, he can't keep up with both. He can't keep up with all three of them. His senses are overloaded and the punch is about to land directly on his face. But just as it's about to land, a giant shockwave shocks Azuku out of the way and lands straight onto the Nomu, budging it backwards and clashing with the punch. And all he could hear as he, as he rolls to the side and gathers himself is a giant and loud, I am here. All Might has arrived onto the battlefield with a ton of pro heroes. All Might clashes with the Nomu, and with the support of a bunch of other pro heroes on top of that, and luckily, the heads up that Azuku gave, well, this fight is over. The Nomu is subdued, Shigaraki is shot multiple times through the leg, and on top of that, they're teleported away. Shigaraki and Kirogiri get out of there, and that's about it. The Nomu does not escape, 
and the Nomu is stuck there in a comatose stasis. Izuku looks at everything going on and he sighs with relief as he stands up. All Might asks him if he's okay and hurts, but Izuku just walks by and pats him on the shoulder, thanking him for at least saving his ass. Izuku walks away, wishing that he could have done more, but he knows that even himself he's limited. This alone is a humble piece of pie. This is some humble pie for Izuku, especially as he walks over to Aizawa, levitating his, the scarf once again, throwing it around his neck. He apologizes, saying that he shouldn't have taken it, especially without asking. He leaves with every single student there, and they head back onto the buses and, and head back to UA. They're all given about a day off, a day or two off, just to recollect, relax, and get over what just occurred. But Izuku is already back working out, training, and trying to learn more about this power that he has within him. This power of that seems so mythical, that seems like it's some sort of magic spell that was gifted upon him, but he doesn't know what it is necessarily. It seems to be, well, something similar to something he's read in a book, something he's read about, well, Norse myth mythology something known as the Bifrost, but that, that makes no sense. How would that even be the case? All he has is a foresight quirk. There's no way he could have anything else. Gifted a power based around the eyes that he currently has? Maybe. Maybe it has something to do with that. Maybe his genetics are built differently, far differently than anybody else. Maybe his quirk itself is evolving, but he's not so sure. It's something to think about, but it's not something he can capitalize on, at least at this moment. Azuku would be back at school, and they would announce the UA Sports Festival. The UA Sports Festival is something that is he that is right in front of them. Something that Azuku can show off exactly what he's capable of. But at the same time, it's all strategy. All, all he can think about is setting things up properly for himself and for whatever else that is ahead. Azuku... When he arrives at the UA Sports Festival, he hears what's going on and sees that Midnight herself is announcing what's going to happen. First off is an obstacle course race, something that Izuku looks at to be something very interesting. Well, since a bunch of people can actually pass, he sees fit that he doesn't get first. There's no reason to get first in this regard, even if it helps him in the next round. As long as he gets through, conserve stamina, and easily set himself up for the next round. As Izuku heads through the obstacle course race, he kind of takes his time, his sweet time, frankly, and eventually when he reaches the minefield, he could just walk through without any problem at all. He knows exactly the way to go, but he decides to wait a little bit, and eventually he decides to run through without a hitch, and as he does so, he lets a couple people pass him. Actually, five to six people pass him. He believes that it doesn't necessarily matter where he places as long as he doesn't place first necessarily, but this would give him a far better team in the next round. On top of that, it would give him a chance to, well, easily win that next round as well. As everyone passes through, and as Azuku does as well, the next round is announced to be the cavalry battle. And let's just say a ton, a ton of people want to be with Azuku. You know, I mean, it's pretty obvious why. He can kind of, in a way, see the future. And Izuku finds this very funny, but still, he gets a really, really stacked team. Consisting of people from Class 1B and Class 1A. He actually likes the Tokiyami pick, especially with Dark Shadow and how effective Dark Shadow really is. On top of that, Setsuno Tokage is someone that is extremely, extremely good, especially in something like this. With the addition of a couple more people and some people that are very, very good in this, in this cavalry battle, it's going to be relatively easy for them to grab some points and just stay on top. Izuku tells all of them to just follow his lead. They're going to take out a couple of the weaker opponents, grab their headbands, and then they're going to sit on the headbands until it's time for the next round. That's exactly what they do. Easy peasy. They do just that, but it seems that Monoma has a different choice of action. He actually wants to use Azuku's quirk to his own advantage, in which 
He of course tries, but that doesn't really work too well. Azuku's quirk is an interesting one for sure. Something that he's worked on for a while. Something that someone else would get extremely overwhelmed with. But with that said, they easily passed the cavalry battle and frankly it was something that it wasn't it wasn't really hard in general for them to pass easily beating them and easily finding their way to the next round azuku begins to tell his team that after this is all said and done well they're going to be going to the one on one portion of the tournament and they better hope that they're not in the same bracket as himself. They they question if he's that overconfident and that he'll definitely he'll that they'll definitely take him down, but no. Azuku wants the pathway to Katsuki Bakugo. He wants to prove something. He wants to show everyone that he truly is the best. But that is going to be for the next part of what if Deku had a foresight quirk. Azuku Midoriya is ready. Well, at least he feels ready. He then heads to school that same day, and he has a little bit of a surprise that he wasn't expecting at all. That's a different bit of training. Training that they weren't they had no idea that they were going to get. And that training was with All Might. Of course, Aizawa would explain to them that they're going to be doing hero training, but it won't be with him. And as he says this, All Might would come into the door. He would be, everyone would be shocked and be confused that it's, that it's All Might that's really, well, with them. All Might then tells all of them to head outside, get on their, their hero outfits, and get ready for a hero bit of training. Of course, Izuku does just that, but he has a weird feeling. While well, looking at All Might and just getting a sense of everything, All Might has a connection to somebody in that room. Has a connection to somebody there. Why? Why would he though? Azuku would continue getting ready and getting on his simple outfit. It would be something very, very elegant in a way, but it's something that isn't really that protective to be honest. He's very reliant on his dodging very reliant on his skill so he feels that he's not going to get touched anyways so there's no real reason but there's one thing that he wants to keep in mind he keeps looking around there might be someone in here that's related to all might at least that's the theory he has first but soon he would realize that to be not exactly the case there's nobody that's related to all might there there's somebody that's the successor of all might there they head out and they begin to stand in front of All Might as he explains. And Azuku continues to survey the area until his eyes lock onto one person and he shakes his head. There's no effing way. He stares at Katsuki Bakugo for a second more as he turns back to All Might. He can tell something. Something between them. No. He realizes something though. That news story not too long ago. The news that he saw about the sludge villain, about Katsuki Bakugo diving head first like an idiot. No way. He... He proved himself? Azuku is shocked. Taken back. The hell? If anybody should have the power of All Might, it should be him. But he shakes this off, this idea, relatively quickly. He doesn't need it anyways. He'll beat the brakes off of All Might's little successor, just like how he's always been doing this entire time. Azuku doesn't even, doesn't even hear what All Might has to say until it's time to fight. He hears that he's on the hero side with a girl by the name of Ochako Uraka, someone that he saved earlier. And he hears that Bakugo and Tenya Ida are on the other side. Azuku tells her and makes it clear that he wants Bakugo that he'll take him on and get rid of him quickly. And that's all that needs to be said and done. He puts away his weaponry, believing he won't even need it. Azuku would wait the five minutes of planning and approach the staircase knowing Bakugo, knowing exactly what he'll do. Bakugo comes charging down 
as he explodes toward Azuku. And as he does, he shoots explosions straight at him. Azuku obviously dodges relatively easily too, landing a couple punches here and there. But he can feel that Bakugo's speed is slightly increasing. But it's odd. It doesn't feel that much different. Azuku would bob and weave and eventually get a hold of Bakugo, getting him to the ground and punching him square in the jaw. But just as he does this, a kick would come soaring right to his face, as it barely, barely misses. Azuku steps back and looks at Bakugo and is kind of shocked. Is he overwhelming him? No, 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 no. He's not getting overwhelmed. That's not the case. It can't be. Azuku stands his ground, and it feels like Bakugo's movements are getting sharper, quicker. And as soon as Azuku realizes this, he's able to duck under one punch, but is caught with another, straight to the cheek. He brushes this off, and he smirks. He laughs at Bakugo, saying that he landed one blow, and, that's, and it, he did so much to land one, but he won't land another. Azuku steps up as he dodges multiple punches as Bakugo's fighting style is getting very linear, very predictable. Azuku then lands a punch to the stomach as he kicks him straight to the wall as well, slamming Bakugo's head into the ground as Bakugo seems to be unconscious, out cold. But as Azuku's walking away, all he hears is steps. Bakugo stands up and he shoots a punch at him so strong that when he dodges it, it leaves a giant hole, a crater in the building. The building that they're standing in. Azuku is shocked to see this, and he looks to his side to see that it partially his arm got hit, and it's hurting terribly bad. Partially broken, Azuku looks over to see Bakugo really isn't there anymore. He's out cold. He lands on the ground as, as Azuku grabs his shoulder, and it hurts like all hell. He runs up the staircase to make sure to secure the win, and as they do, he helps Ochako get, uh, basically knock out Tenya, or at least get rid of him for the moment, as they touch the bomb. Ochako asks about his hurt arm, what happened, but Izuku shrugs it off, saying that it's nothing. It was a fault on his own. He didn't, he didn't, he underestimated somebody. He underestimated Bakugo and got hurt. He walked over down back down the staircase as he grabs Bakugo by the back of the shirts, dragging him off. Under his breath, he kind of remarks that Bakugo has earned it. He's definitely showed him something, something else. As, as he's saying this to himself, All Might can hear this, and he smiles as well. All Might writes it down, and then pulls out a phone and begins to text somebody. He begins to text Shota Aizawa. Azuku may not be humbled entirely, but he did realize that there are or there is someone that is extremely strong that may or may not be able to keep up with him. This is something that will drive Azuku, something that will make him want to become stronger, something that they were very worried about. But now it feels that they don't have to worry, at least for the time being. Azuku would help Bakugo get to the recovery girl and leave him there. He would leave as well and head off back to, well, where All Might is as he watches the rest of the fights go on. All Might asks if he should go to Recovery Girl to get that arm healed, but Azuku says that there's no, no reason to do so. It seems that his bones, his body heals relatively quickly. He's not exactly sure how it works, but he then focuses on his arm as it, in, in a way, heals itself but very, very slowly. Over the course of the day, it will eventually heal. Azuku isn't really sure how or exactly why it works, but it's some sort of mystical power in a way. He looks at All Might and says that it has something, or it has to have something to do with the fact that he can kind of look into the future. It's like he can mold his body for the future, accelerating the heal healing process or at least that's the idea or hypothesis he came up with. But still, it's something that's beneficial and something that he needs to learn more about. So these little ticky-tack blows and these hurt injuries, he needs to learn how to, for one, avoid them, but on top of that, heal them himself. 
As All Might hears this, he nods. He's interested in Izuku. Izuku has basically taken All Might's interest for sure, and he can tell that he really has a good future in hero work, and he knows that he's only going to get better at it. Izuku would wait for all the fights to be over and done with, as the rest of the school day would go on relatively normal. He would head home, and then he would head back to school the next day for a new version of training that he would hear about. He would hear that they're going to the USJ, and this is for rescue training, something that Izuku didn't really do much of, but believes that it could be a really strong part of his repertoire. Izuku is very interested in what kind of rescue training they're going to be doing as he awaits Aizawa to explain more. He tells all of them what he can and then tells them to head off to the buses. As they do though, Bakugo walks up to Izuku and remarks that, he th that Izuku knows, doesn't he? He knows exactly what happened and what is going on. Izuku looks at him and shakes his head. Of course I know. I know everything, right? Azuku kind of smirks at this as he says it, but says that, but then makes a motion with his lips as if he's not going to say a word. Uh, Bakugo, for the first time in a while, or really ever, smirks at a response that Azuku has just said, as if he's becoming more comfortable with him, as if they're kind of becoming rivals. Not friends, but rivals. Azuku would sit in the bus as they all speak about who has the strongest of all quirks, but he wouldn't say a word. He didn't care, which was surprising, because normally Azuku would tell all of them that he's head over shoulders better than every single person there, so much more progressed, but no, he didn't care. He was locked in on something else. He was thinking about something else. Azuku would then head, head out of the bus, but as he would, as they arrived at the USJ, he would look at somebody, stare at them. And it was as if he could see right through them. He stares at the boy by the name of Aoyama. He's awed. He can see something. Something is coming. Azuku walks over to Aizawa and immediately tells him that that boy right there, Yuga Aoyama, he's hiding something. Aizawa's confused. What do you mean by that, kid? As he asks this, Pro Hero 13 comes out, but they step aside and continue talking. Azuku says that he can see most things that are going on. Aizawa's attempt to basically train them and give them little tests, and on top of that, he can see Pro Hero 13's whole plan for the day. But there's one thing that all of these kids that he's staring at have in common. They're unknowing for what's coming today. But that person right there, they know what's coming. Azuku looks at Aizawa seriously and asks if there's any way he would know what's coming. Azuku stares at Aizawa's face as he could already tell Aizawa has no clue how he would come up with any idea of what's going on today. Azuku nods and he tells Aizawa that they should call for help now. Something bad is going to happen. They all walk inside as Aizawa makes sure to call for help before they even get inside the area, or at least signal for help to an extent, getting getting Kaminari to do so. And before they could walk before they walk in, the transmitter and their basically all of their communications are not blocked. So when they walk in and they see that the communications are blocked, now this is a serious issue. Azuku's little theory was correct. He was all he was completely correct about not only the one kid that that basically had an idea of what's going to happen, but on top of that, Azuku knew what was going to occur. Aizawa tells him, Azuku, and the rest of the class to get ready that something is about to arrive. A portal opens and a ton of villains do just that. Azuku tells Aizawa that he knows that it's he'll, they'll get in trouble for helping and self-defense is the least they can do but just but he's gonna need him on that battlefield Aizawa nods his head and tells him that him that 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 himself and Azuku are going to the battlefield everyone else make sure to get into little units to protect each other 
Azuku and Aizawa drop down as they begin to knock out villain after villain. In terms of the villains that are there, they're nothing compared to Azuku, and frankly, Aizawa would destroy all of them alone. But this makes things about twice as fast, and Azuku isn't going to be touched by a single finger. Azuku does, though, have an eye on that main villain, the one with the hands on his face, his body. He's concerned, but he's also interested. What is he? Why is he here? He can foresee the actions that the man will will take, but on top of that, he can tell that this person has gone through hell and back, as if he was abandoned, destroyed, obliterated, and, well, he's pointing his anger towards someone. Who is that someone? He looks around, and he can tell by the, the basically the attitude of that same man by the name of Shigaraki, he's annoyed. The person he's looking for isn't even here. Or at least, one of them aren't. Azuku helps destroy all of the low-tier villains. They're all gone in a matter of minutes. And, and even Kurogiri couldn't get every single one of the heroes or the future heroes or Class 1A out of the way and put them in different zones. Because of how fast Aizawa and Azuku took out all of the small fry villains. But now, it's... It's Azuku and Aizawa against Shigaraki and Kurogiri. But that's not the only people that are there. Or, well, maybe this isn't a person, more like a monster. Azuku looks as the portal opens up once again and it walks out, staring daggers into Azuku and Aizawa. And Azuku immediately tells Aizawa that they need to go. That he needs to get out of here now. There is no dodging this monster. That he'll need to he'll need to look 17 steps ahead to make sure he doesn't get touched. Aizawa says that he's not letting a kid fight his battles, but Izuku jumps over toward Aizawa, grabbing his scarf and ripping it off of him as he throws it on top of himself. Aizawa is shocked to see this, and Izuku begins to float the scarves as if he know he knows exactly how they work. Azuku tells him to go now, that he needs to help the other kids get to safety immediately, and that this is the only way they'll win. He, uh, Aizawa looks into the eyes of Azuku as they're glowing that dark, dark purple now, and he knows this to be the truth. Azuku basically tells Aizawa that this is do or die. He needs to be quick, and they need to hope that reinforcements come immediately. Azuku then waits for the Nomu this giant monster to make his move. And as he does, he slips under the punches as he wraps the scarf around him, trying to leverage the monster into basically slamming himself into the ground, land punches on himself. Azuku won't do any damage, he knows that. But luckily he has some sort of weaponry to at least try and parry some of these attacks. He slams his sword on the fist of the Nomu, but it shatters into pieces. Yeah, that, that version of his little well, plan went to shit real quick. Azuku continues to dodge, but he knows that if once Shigaraki and Kirogiri decide that they want to enter this fight, and let's just say it seems that Azuku has run out of time. A portal opens up right next to him as a hand presses through it. Azuku is able to dodge, but as he does, he sees a giant fist about to connect with his face. Yeah, Azuku may have foresaw most things, but this is overwhelming. The amount of things going on all at once, the lack of speed that he has currently at this moment, he can't keep up with both. He can't keep up with all three of them. His senses are overloaded and the punch is about to land directly on his face. But just as it's about to land, a giant shockwave shocks Azuku out of the way and lands straight onto the Nomu, budging it backwards and clashing with the punch. And all he could hear as he, as he rolls to the side and gathers himself is a giant and loud, I am here. All Might has arrived onto the battlefields with a ton of pro heroes. 
All Might clashes with the Nomu, and with the support of a bunch of other pro heroes on top of that, and luckily, the heads up that Izuku gave, well, this fight is over. The Nomu is subdued, Shigaraki is shot multiple times through the leg, and on top of that, they're teleported away. Shigaraki and Kirogiri get out of there, and that's about it. The Nomu does not escape, and the Nomu is stuck there in a comatose stasis. Izuku looks at everything going on, and he sighs with relief as he stands up. All Might asks him if he's okay and hurts, but Izuku just walks by and pats him on the shoulder, thanking him for at least saving his ass. Izuku walks away, wishing that he could have done more, but he knows that even himself he's limited. This alone is a humble piece of pie. This is some humble pie for Izuku, especially as he walks over to Aizawa, levitating his, the scarf once again, throwing it around his neck. He apologizes, saying that he shouldn't have taken it, especially without asking. He leaves with every single student there, and they head back onto the buses and, and head back to UA. They're all given about a day off, a day or two off, just to recollect, relax, and get over what just occurred. But Izuku is already back working out, training, and trying to learn more about this power that he has within him. This power of that seems so mythical, that seems like it's some sort of magic spell that was gifted upon him, but he doesn't know what it is necessarily. It seems to be, well, something similar to something he's read in a book, something he's read about, well, Norse myth mythology something known as the Bifrost, but that, that makes no sense. How would that even be the case? All he has is a foresight quirk. There's no way he could have anything else. Gifted a power based around the eyes that he currently has? Maybe, maybe it has something to do with that. Maybe his genetics are built differently, far differently than anybody else. Maybe his quirk itself is evolving, but he's not so sure. It's something to think about, but it's not something he can capitalize on, at least at this moment. Azuku would be back at school, and they would announce the UA Sports Festival. The UA Sports Festival is something that is he that is right in front of them. Something that Azuku can show off exactly what he's capable of. But at the same time, it's all strategy. All, all he can think about is setting things up properly for himself and for whatever else that is ahead. Azuku... When he arrives at the UA Sports Festival, he hears what's going on and sees that Midnight herself is announcing what's going to happen. First off is an obstacle course race, something that Izuku looks at to be something very interesting. Well, since a bunch of people can actually pass, he sees fit that he doesn't get first. There's no reason to get first in this regard, even if it helps him in the next round. As long as he gets through, conserve stamina and easily set himself up for the next round as azuku heads through the obstacle course race he kind of takes his time his sweet time frankly and eventually when he reaches the minefield he could just walk through without any problem at all he knows exactly the way to go but he decides to wait a little bit and eventually he decides to run through without a hitch and as he does so he lets a couple people pass him Actually, five to six people pass him. He believes that it doesn't necessarily matter where he places as long as he doesn't place first necessarily, but this would give him a far better team in the next round. On top of that, it would give him a chance to, well, easily win that next round as well. As everyone passes through, and as Azuku does as well, the next round is announced to be the cavalry battle. And let's just say a ton, a ton of people want to be with Azuku. You know, I mean, it's pretty obvious why. He can kind of, in a way, see the future. And Izuku finds this very funny, but still, he gets a really, really stacked team. Consisting of people from Class 1B and Class 1A. 
He actually likes the Tokiyami pick, especially with Dark Shadow and how effective Dark Shadow really is. On top of that, Setsuna Tokage is someone that is extremely, extremely good, especially in something like this. With the addition of a couple more people and some people that are very, very good in this, in this cavalry battle, it's going to be relatively easy for them to grab some points and just stay on top. Izuku tells all of them to just follow his lead. They're going to take out a couple of the weaker opponents, grab their headbands, and then they're going to sit on the headbands until it's time for the next round. That's exactly what they do. Easy peasy. They do just that, but it seems that Monoma has a different choice of action. He actually wants to use Azuku's quirk to his own advantage, in which he of course tries, but that doesn't really work too well. Azuku's quirk is an interesting one for sure. Something that he's worked on for a while. Something that someone else would get extremely overwhelmed with. But with that said, they easily passed the cavalry battle. And frankly, it was something that it wasn't, it wasn't really hard in general for them to pass. Easily beating them and easily finding their way to the next round. Azuku begins to tell his team... That after this is all said and done, well, they're going to be going to the one-on-one -on -one portion of the tournament. And they better hope that they're not in the same bracket as himself. They they question if he's that overconfident and that he'll definitely he'll that they'll definitely take him down, but no. Azuku wants the pathway to Katsuki Bakugo. He wants to prove something. He wants to show everyone that he truly is the best. But that is going to be for the next part of what if Deku had a foresight quirk. Azuku Midoriya has made it to the final round, or at least the final category of rounds. That is the one versus one battles. Now this is something that Azuku has been waiting for. As long as he made it to this stage, he knew that he had a massive advantage over every single person there. And the fact is, that's just the truth. Azuku is made for one versus one battles, is built for one versus one. Of course, he can take on multiple enemies, but it's a lot harder for him, at least with his quirk. So when his first test is someone from the general studies by the name of Shinso, Azuku begins to foresee what he needs to get done and what needs to happen. And frankly, this fight would end relatively quickly. Of course, the Mr. Shinso would hold up some sort of fight, but Azuku knows of his quirk and obviously wouldn't speak to him one bit. He would hear this or that and hear everything that Shinso was saying, but he would ignore him. He wouldn't say a word. He wouldn't say one thing. Of course, just like normal, someone would tell him about, his, about Shinso's quirk, so this Azuku, hands down, would not say a word. He's calm, cool, and collected, at least to a certain extent, and if he knows that he needs to get to Bakugo, he's not going to throw away that chance for some general studies person. Of course, he eliminates him, and he begins to tell Shinso that his quirk is pretty interesting. Very interesting. He's surprised that he couldn't figure something out and get into the hero and into the hero side of things. But you know, some of us don't think that far ahead. Zuku just leaves, doesn't say another word, and he awaits on his next fight. As he does, and as he waits, he sees Shoto Todoroki win. So after this, he knows that Shoto Todoroki is going to be his next challenge. So, this is what he does. He heads out, gets ready, and as he's going to the stage, someone approaches him. A fiery aura, a man, a giant man approaches him. This man is Endeavor. Endeavor tells him to get Sh Shoto to use his fire side. And immediately, Azuku says that he has no respect for someone like Endeavor. The only respect that he even holds for him is at least a hard-working aspect of it. He can tell, and he can foresee in the eyes of Endeavor that he's not a good man, the farthest from it. Of course, Endeavor's mad at hearing this, but Azuku knows this to be true, and even Endeavor to an extent knows this to be true. Azuku 
not really worrying about what Endeavor said. He says that he will get a, he will get Todoroki to use whatever means necessary to win the fight. If that means getting him to use his fire side, then so be it. But Izuku is not doing it for Endeavor, he's doing it for himself. Of course, Izuku would head out and he would approach the stage to see Todoroki on the other side. And immediately as the fight begins, he would ask, well, he would ask Todoroki about his face, about his scar. Did an Endeavor do that to him? And of course, Todoroki says that in technicality, he did. It was all Endeavor's fault, but it doesn't matter right now. He's going to beat him and show everyone that he can only that he can beat everybody using half of his quirk. Of course, Azuku doesn't like this idea. He tells him that there's no way he's beating him with more or with just half his quirk. He's going to have to use his fire side. And let's just say Todoroki is not too fond of this, accusing Azuku of basically basically being persuaded by his, by Endeavor. What did he give you? What did he tell you? What is he going to offer you? Azuku doesn't listen and says that he's doing this for himself. He wants a good fight. That's what he needs. He needs to excel himself, make himself stronger, and using half of, of his quirk, or Todoroki using half of his quirk, isn't going to make him better, isn't going to make him stronger. Of course, Todoroki is confused. But nonetheless, their fight begins, and it seems like Azuku has every advantage you could possibly imagine. It's so one, one dynamic, you could say, or there's only one real version of this fight he can see. Todoroki is not ready for Azuku, far from it, actually. The fact that he's only going to use one of his quirks, or half of his quirk, is basically going to allow him to just lose. And he would lose 10 times out of 10. He's too one, one dimensional. He's only going one way. And there's no way Azuku would lose to someone this one dimensional. And frankly, it pushes Todoroki to the, bri the bridge. T pushes him so far to the point that he accidentally uses his father's quirk. Accidentally uses his fireside. Azuku smiles and says that that's great. Maybe they can actually fight for real now, but Todoroki still refuses to do so. There is no soppy, nice, motivational speech Azuku will give him. Azuku just doesn't do that. So when he hears that Todoroki doesn't want to use his fireside and that was accidental and he still won't, well, let's just say he's not too happy with that. Azuku feels that this fight is over. He dodges the last iceberg that he gets sent his way and taken and taking a wooden version of his sword that obviously he can use. He can't use an actual steel version because, you know, kill people. But he takes a wooden version of his sword, hitting him, hitting Todoroki so hard in the back of the neck that he gets knocked out cold. Azuku shakes his head and is frustrated. He wanted a good fight, a long fight. He wanted he wanted one that could rival him in Bakugo. That's what he wanted. At least that's the motivation that he currently has at that moment. He felt he felt the need and the want for that. Nobody else has challenged him. And the last thing that did challenge him was a giant monster that was a freak of nature. Something that was horrible. And even Bakugo didn't challenge him enough. Not enough. And hopefully he can challenge him far more now. But still, it's something that he's frustrated with. But he understands, in a way. He understands that all of them, in a way, are freaks. They're all monsters to a degree. So living with that is something that they all need to, well, go to sleep with at night. Todoroki, on the other hand, has been raised by a monster. Izuku would look back as he's named the winner toward Endeavor. He would look at Endeavor and just shake his head. He realizes something. Endeavor is something or is is someone he never wants to become compassion is what 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 is different between both endeavor and all might it's something that makes them truly heroic endeavor is just a flaming ball of trash and that reminds him of katsuki bakugo as well the attitude that bakugo brings well 
How could he truly be the successor of All Might? Whatever. It's something that he doesn't really want to think about, at least not anymore. But just as he that slips from his mind, he waits for the next fights to occur. He easily would destroy anybody else besides Bakugo coming into these fights. So if he had to fight Tenyaida or someone of that degree, it wouldn't even be close. Nothing would be close. Tenyaida, if he had to fight Tokiyami, all of them, they're not going to be able to keep up and none of them could overwhelm him. So it's finally time. The fight between Katsuki Bakugo and Azuku Midoriya. Now this is the fight Azuku wanted. He wanted this all along. The successor of All Might stands in front of him and he knows, he knows that he can show everyone right now that he is the best. The fight would begin and immediately Bakugo would come out swinging full speed to try and give, get, just overwhelm Azuku at all points of attack. Azuku would see exactly what he's doing, but Bakugo's movements, they're getting slow or they're getting predictable slowly but surely. Azuku would continue to dodge, move, and eventually he would land a punch straight to Bakugo's stomach that would send him almost off off of the arena. He would he would gather his things and gather his well, his body exploding back toward Azuku. Azuku would continue to dodge, using his foresight in a way that Bakugo seems to be completely outclassed. But as Bakugo begins to turn up the heat, and as he begins to use one for all at a small percentage, something he learned via his own quirk and the way he actually controls his own powers, he's able to use about 5% of one for all. As he's doing this though, he begins to actually slowly but surely close the distance on Azuku. It seems that Azuku is being overwhelmed. It seems that he may lose this fight. A punch gets lands to, a, to Azuku's jaw, then his stomach, and Azuku has to regain himself as he slaps Bakugo with his wooden sword. As he does this, he backs up and he begins to kind of shrug off those hits. He realizes that his face hurts and that, well, damage is something he's going to have to be very, very close with. He walks toward Bakugo as he dodges punch after punch, but as a punch lands on Azuku, he counters with three of his own. He knows that these punches are going to hurt, shatter, shatter ribs and break arms, but he doesn't care. He knows that he's going to have to take these punches and he's going to have to give out some of his own. He can foresee it. He sees all of it. He begins to absolutely dismantle Bakugo as he blocks, parries, and takes a couple hits trading with Bakugo in a way but for one punch he gives three he gives four he gives five Azuku begins to speed up his speed and tempo is actually accelerating now Azuku is ha now has the upper hand landing a punch to the jaw of Bakugo to the rib cage of him and then multiple body shots and then a knee to the face Bakugo is shook extremely bad he doesn't know what's happening as Azuku flips him on his back and lands a kick straight to his face once again Azuku continues the pressure and as Bakugo is getting bloodied and battered Azuku realizes that this fight is practically over he immediately pulls out his sword his, well, his wooden sword of course and he lands a straight hit to the temple on the hilt of his sword knocking Bakugo out cold he leans his sword on the ground and he basically holds himself up as if he was using a cane. He's extremely hurt at this point, multiple shattered ribs and probably an injured arm or leg or two. He looks at Bakugo and Bakugo's out. It's over. Midnight announces Azuku as the winner of the UA Sports Festival, but Azuku doesn't even react. He goes down, picks up Bakugo, putting him on his back as he limps his way out of the arena and limps his way to recovery girl of course everyone's shocked this show of sportsmanship isn't something that anybody would have thought from Azuku himself even Aizawa Aizawa believed that Azuku was humbled to a certain extent but not this humbled maybe he just has respect maybe it's so much respect so or so much respect toward Bakugo at least at this moment that he feels the need to show even more to show that he does sort of care he brings him to recovery girl 
as Azuku begins to leave, Recovery Girl says that that he needs to be healed by her as well. I know that she knows that he has a quirk that maybe or may not allow him to heal, but that could be reducing his lifespan. You never know. They haven't run tests on that part of his quirk at all, so they know nothing about it. Recovery Girl heals Azuku, in turn making him extremely tired. Some time would finally pass, and well, a good amount of it as well, and their podiums would be set. Azuku would be at number one, Baku at number two, and frankly, whoever you have in mind, probably like Tokiomi or something at number three. Azuku would look up toward the stands, and he would see his mother. Nobody else, the only person that's really been there for him this entire time. He sees a ton of the, his quote-unquote middle school friends, but that doesn't matter to him at all. As he's waiting there, as he's looking, and as All Might gives out all these medals, telling everyone how good they did, Bakugo seems frustrated. He seems mad. Izuku would pat him on the shoulder and say that they're going to go again. They'll be doing this for a long time until they're pro heroes. Bakugo slightly smirks at this, but doesn't say a word. Izuku gets his first place medal, and everyone cheers. But there's someone else watching as this is unfolding. Someone else is currently watching this screen, staring at Azuku, wondering what the hell he is. His powers is beyond anything that they've ever seen before. Something that is able to keep up with, this, with some crazy beings, with crazy hero students, the son of Endeavor. That Bakugo kid that has a crazy explosion quirk that seems to have an, so, some sort of accelerant. What is he? He's just fast? Is he powerful? Can he see the future? Those eyes. Those eyes are what are is what is mocking Shigaraki. But as the screen is on, it gets turned off from behind Shigaraki. Someone's behind him. It's all for one. All for one tells Shigaraki that that boy is the answer, the key. He is what needs to be taken and used as a weapon. He is something that they've been waiting for for a long time. And that this might be their chance to truly get their leg up on the hero society forever and take over. Shigaraki smirks and nods saying that he had questions about this kid, but his name is Izuku Midoriya. They're not sure, or he's not sure what he is exactly, but what he knows is that it's labeled, his quirk is labeled as a foresight quirk, very similar to the one of Sir Nidai, but all for one shakes his head. That is no Sir Nidai quirk. That is something far, far more powerful. Izuku is then obviously awarded to be the number one of, of UA again. And everything kind of unfolds exactly how he believed it to be. After a couple days would pass, and finally they would arrive back in class, Azuku would hear about what he needs, basically needs to do, and what's going to happen. He has a ton of offers for internships, a ton. But there's one that definitely catches his eye. One that he definitely wants to go to, and that's Endeavor. Endeavor himself may be kind of paying it forward toward Izuku, but maybe he believes that having Izuku there will allow Todoroki, his own son, to become even stronger. But still, that could be the case, or could not be the case. Nonetheless, Izuku will take that chance and will take the training from the number two hero, nonetheless. This would eventually lead into them choosing their hero names. And I think it's pretty fitting that Izuku, with something relatively simple, something that all of you probably could have guessed. So, he'll be known as the all-seeing hero, Heimdall. And of course, for short, Heimdall. We'll still be referencing him as Izuku to reduce confusion, but his hero name will be Heimdall, and everyone knows it from books and storytelling of this North Norse god. And of course, his his quirk isn't exactly the same as Heimdall and his powers, but it's very similar at that. Azuku would then wait on his his ride to approach. 
and when it did, he would get in. He would be driven all the way to Endeavor and his agency. When they arrive, it's time for his internship, but Endeavor makes it abundantly clear that he's only there to help Todoroki, or to help Shoto Todoroki, and Azuku doesn't care. Any fight with, with Shoto, or any fight with one of the Todorokis, would allow him to get far stronger. He's dealing with a quirk that is very special, and a quirk that would definitely amp himself up further beyond. All quirks would allow him to basically transcend what his for foresight currently is. Prediction and making things happen exactly how he sees fit. He can then maybe in the future approach certain scenarios even better. With that said though, their training would then begin. Azuku would be put through hell and so would Todoroki, or Shoto Todoroki of course. They would train day in and day out. Azuku would see gains that he's never seen before, especially against a skilled opponent like Shoto, it would allow him to foresee many different things. Many long ranged attackers were pretty difficult for Azuku. He's fought a lot of brawlers, brawlers that are very up close and personal, those are easy. The long ranged attackers that are so, well, unpredictable are exactly the ones that he needed to get better at, and this is perfect time for him too. After some time would pass, they would finally get their chance in the field, but they wouldn't realize that the field would become a deadly, deadly place because something decided to occur. A challenge for Zuku, and not only Zuku, but also Shoto Todoroki would appear, and that is the hero killer. When they head back down, or when they head to Hosu City, and when they arrive, everything hits the fan. Nomus, creatures, and everything alike. Because they're searching for something. Searching for someone. But that is not a matter for Azuku and Shoto. Because when they hear that Tenya Ida is gone, and they go looking for him, and they find him in an alleyway with a blade to his back, they fight between Shoto Todoroki Azuku Midoriya and the hero killer is about to begin, but that is for the next part of what if Deku had a foresight quirk. The last we left off, Azuku Midoriya and Shoto Todoroki were at Hosu City. They got a bit of an alert, an alert from the one and only Tenya Ida, and luckily they got there just on time, because just as they, get, they got there, the sword of the hero killer stain was about to plunge straight into the back of Tenya Ida. Luckily, Shoto Todoroki is able to blast the hero killer with fire, getting him off of Tenya. Azuku walks over and grabs Tenya and drags him away and puts him off to the side. Immediately though, Azuku steps forward and reaches for his blade, but realizes that he no longer has it. He hasn't been training with his blade, his actual sword, because, well, he doesn't want to necessarily kill anybody, especially doesn't want to kill Todoroki. So he decided to stay away from using that said blade. And that's a big unfortunate happening because he's standing in front of somebody that has, well, a lot of blades. Still though, Azuku shakes his head and just doesn't really mind the fact that he doesn't have his blade. He looks toward the hero killer by the name of Stain, and he whispers back toward Todoroki, telling him something relatively simple, but relatively odd at the same time. You take the long range, okay? Be unpredictable. Shoot when, shoot when you shouldn't shoot. Shoot when you should shoot. Just be unpredictable, okay? Todoroki questions why. Why, why would he be unpredictable? I mean, he'll, he'll hit Azuku. But Azuku says that his unpredictability is predictable for him. Azuku smiles and waves him off, saying just to be ready for the craziest fight of his life. Azuku walks toward the hero killer as the hero killer mocks him, saying that he's too cocky, that he's no true hero, and that he has no chance in this. Azuku shakes his head and says that he really, really shouldn't underestimate him. Just as he says this, the hero killer comes charging in. The hero killer, though, would immediately just throw wind, hit wind. That's all he would do. Dodge 
after dodge, Azuku would be un it would be unable to hit Azuku, and the hero killer would begin struggling. On top of that, the hero killer would not not notice the fire that's about to hit him in the face as Azuku dodges out of the way casually, and the fire hits the hero killer directly on the chest. The hero killer doesn't know what's happening. Azuku isn't crazy fast, but it feels as if he knows every he knows everything, as if he's ten steps ahead. And which Azuku kind of laughs about this, and he pulls something out from his back, out of some sort of a holster. And it's a sword? Wait, he just said he didn't have a sword. Azuku laughs a little bit more as the hero killer reaches back to his right pocket to feel that his sword is gone. He just got pickpocketed by this kid, by this wannabe hero. Azuku waves his hand toward, toward Stain, basically greeting him in for another round. As that happens, Azuku can outpace him. It's wild, but... It's frankly because Azuku knows exactly what's going to happen before it even happens. The hero killer has never fought someone like this. Even his battle instincts alone can't help him keep up. Yes, it's keeping him well with not it's basically keeping him available to not get stabbed, but other than that, it's not helping him otherwise. Azuku would eventually get the upper hand and eventually would grab the back of the hero killer as fire and ice slam into him and as Azuku hits the hilt on the back of his neck he collapses toward the ground and Azuku grabs chains and wraps it around his his ankles his hands and every piece that he possibly could once again though Azuku tells Todoroki to walk over here and freeze part of his body Azu Azuku makes it clear that the the hero killer could be playing possum so that's exactly what they do on top of the chains Azuku grabs him, grabs the hero killer by the arms and drags him off. He tells Todoroki to grab Tenya and basically to help him out to make sure he's good. As they do this though, Endeavor finally arrives with many others and he, th and he throws the hero killer toward Endeavor and Azuku laughs, laughs and basically says that it was real impressive how Endeavor defeated the hero killer. That firepower is one hell of a thing. Azuku just walks off as he begins to head off, basically back toward the car that they basically showed up in. Endeavor is shocked to see this as if Azuku already knew that this would be the outcome and already knew that this is what needed to be done in terms of, well, giving credit to Endeavor. Todoroki being fine with this as long as they don't get in trouble and that same deal is made so that they don't get in trouble. Endeavor wants to kind of compliment both of them but he's still in that awkward phase where he can't really do so but he just says that they did okay he guesses azuku shrugs it off and says that that's the best they're going to get but still they got work to do azuku and todoroki go back into the training the training chamber basically just this open area that's basically a mini stadium and they begin training once again but of course they would get called back relatively soon time for them to head back to UA because of this crazy incident and Tenya Ida obviously being kind of hospitalized that's definitely not the best thing for the image of well UA but still they all head back they all head back to the or to UA once again and Aizawa explains everything that's going to take place that they're going to have a final exam that this final exam is going to consist of two different do different tests that being the written and then also the practical they all talk about oh how how they need help studying so on and so forth but azuku well i mean being that he's extremely intelligent this would be very easy i mean the test would be very easy and there's no really chance of him failing or basically not passing at least the written exam he doesn't know how he'll fare in the in the practical but he feels that he'll fare pretty well so he does help a couple people study but being him himself he gets a little frustrated with some of them because they're kind of slow but still he does his best and carries on with what he needs to do and eventually it leads them to passing the written exam or at least some of them passing the written exam and then on to the practical the practical exam is where Azuku will definitely be able to show what he's made of. Not only that, he'll have to show a little bit of teamwork. Some teamwork that he hasn't quite shown just yet. 
I mean, he showed it with Todoroki, but no one's really supposed to know about that. So, yeah, no comment on that regard. With that said, though, they all meet at the gym. The gym where all the teachers are currently waiting. Many of them thought that they were going to be fighting robots, but that's not the case. The furthest from it, actually. They're going to be fighting the teachers. The teachers of UA who are pro heroes. Now, this is going to be a bit of a challenge. Azuko sees this as a great way to truly train and test his abilities, but he wonders what teacher he'll be going against. He waits as Aizawa begins to talk, and after he's done, they actually don't bring up Azuku or Bakugo. Azuku now assumes that they'll be fighting together as a duo, but just before he explains who they will be going against, well, Aizawa walks over to Azuku and throws something on his shoulder as it wraps around his neck. It's a scarf. Another version of Aizawa's scarf. After Aizawa learned how, or saw, frankly, how good he used it before, he thought he would get another one for him made from, obviously, the support heroes. On top of that, giving him a, a purely metal bow staff that he can, he can use. And of course, Azuku knows how to use this. He knows how to use most weaponry. Uh, Aizawa explains that this will help him basically in the line of hero work and allow him to actually use a weapon instead of, you know, not being able to use a sword because, you know, you'll kill people. Of course, Azuku is happy to see this, but there has to be a catch. Aizawa says not necessarily, but if you want to call it that, the catch is that they will be fighting one of the hardest, if not the hardest, person to fight out of all the teachers. Azuku is basically taken back by this and he shakes his head it's all might isn't it just as he says this all might comes crashing down to the ground with a loud i am here and of course it's going to be bakugo and azuku midoriya versus the symbol of peace all might azuku is excited but at the same time nervous in a way he knows how strong bakugo is but all might still in his more powerful condition of course, not super, super powerful. He's not prime All Might by any means, but he is stronger than Bakugo, at least at this moment. So using them as a comparison or a stick, a stick comparison to see where they are in terms of distance, it's kind of hard to tell. But with that said, it doesn't necessarily matter. Bakugo and Azuku begin to formulate a small plan. With the respect that was given before, Bakugo knows that a plan will be needed. Azuku says that... It's really nothing crazy. They're just going to have to predict what All Might's going to do for the first parts. They could always escape, but he assumes that Bakugo doesn't want to do that. So, they're going to have to expose weaknesses that, that All Might has, in which Bakugo questions what kind of weaknesses are those. Azuku says that, ba that Bakugo and All Might are brawlers. They're not very technical, so we can ex they can expose that. There are certain crucial points on one's body that will get exposed when overextending and being a brawler. Azuku explains that there are certain weak points that they can strike on All Might, being that toward the rib cage and being that toward certain parts of his neck and also his legs, that if they properly coordinate their attacks, especially with basically all the with the weaponry that was given to him with this metal bow staff and also Aizawa's or a version of Aizawa's scarf he should be able to get some openings to take advantage of. Bakugo nods his head as they await their turn to go. And when it's finally their turn to face down All Might, they get ready as the gates swing open. They go forward toward All Might and they begin their assault. Bakugo charging in first as, as Azuku is very, very close behind, closing the distance toward, toward All Might as quick as possible, even though he's shooting insane pressurized wind toward them. Nonetheless, they get that distance closed and they're right next to All Might. Bakugo immediately tries to attack at the eyes and also different parts of the ribcage of All Might to try to expose something. Azuku attacks the one part of the ribcage that he knows is slightly injured, smacking it with his bow staff, his metal bow staff that feels as light as paper. On top of that, striking part of his leg on the inside of the thigh, and on top of that, 
striking toward the where the knee and also the the other part of the leg or the shin bone meets he begins to try and immobilize all might this is difficult very difficult all might is extremely durable this is no easy task but they continue tr trying to expose these weaknesses as bakugo tries to keep all might blind trying to basically keep all might from seeing them in terms of basically reaction time and slowing down the the rate that all might will be able to counter and in doing this it's giving them so many openings bakugo lands lands blasts powered up by one for all to the stomach of all mights and so on and so forth azuku continues to whack and basically hit all mights so hard that it seems that his his hits with his bow staff are getting strengthened by an outside source and as he swings that that bow staff toward all might's face this glow begins to emerge around it azuku can feel it it's this odd glow this mystical purplish blue a, a mix of all of these colors all surrounding the bow staff as if he's empowering this bow staff with with a power that he had no idea he could truly control and as he does he lands a blow to all might's face that shatters his jaw he's shocked to see this but he can feel the power he can feel something his quirk finally evolving and finally knowing how to use it azuku continues battering all might as all might or as as bakugo follows up as well eventually leading to all might surrendering yes all might could have gone longer he could have survived longer and maybe even pulled it out at the end but the plan and the the, the coordination of bakugo and azuku were so perfect that he felt that it was time to surrender and give the boys their flowers they won they truly did win azuku and bakugo have now passed and they're told that the forest training camp well for one everyone was going to anyways but they won't have to do extra work on top of that of course they're happy to hear this they're not they didn't want to do that and frankly the the matchup against all might that just wasn't necessarily fair everyone else went up against someone way weaker than all might but still if they came out with a technical win they'll take it they'll take it nonetheless the next day they would they would be headed over to the forest training camp the forest training camp is is where they're going to be getting the most out of their courts most out of their training and the most out of everything they possibly could so when they arrive at a giant hill to meet the wild rod pussycats well let's just say the training would begin now and then the wild wild pussycats would basically change the mountain into a giant wave knocking them all off but azuku being himself he was able to easily dodge it standing on top of the on top of the bus but of course aizawa tells him to get down there and help his classmates azuku does just that and he helps out the best to the best of his ability and with a combination of a stronger bakugo and azuku that can basically foresee everything that's coming or at least to an extent they get through the forest easily easily not by not by sundown of course but relatively easily and azuku can feel that this training is already has benefited all of them successfully luckily though they're not going to have to worry too much about training for the rest of the night they're able to get some they get some food they're able to get some rest shower up whatever all that and then hit the hit the bed when they wake up the next morning is when they truly truly begin their training aizawa has a special little thing in mind for azuku and that is actually overwhelming his senses to the point that he can read multiple things at once of course he's already been able to do this to an extent but that's going to be a lot a lot harder when he actually has five to six people attacking him so that's exactly what they do they have some extra extra basically teachers or wild from the wild wild bussy cats aizawa himself and a couple students that just need to use their quirk in terms of output including both both todoroki and some other people as well but they continue just to basically send an onslaught toward Azuku, trying to overwhelm his senses so that hopefully they can break through that wall so that Azuku can truly see multiple things happening at one time. 
when he fought Stain, of course, not many know about that, but when he fought Stain, he was able to coordinate with Todoroki to the point that he could dodge Todoroki's blast, but also dodge the attack Stain was shooting toward him. But that's only two people. What happens when you add three more people, four more people? These are things that Azuka needs to work on, and this is what he will work on throughout this entire time. And there's going to be massive benefits. They see extremely, extremely massive benefits, or he does show, sees extremely massive benefits from this alone. He sees insane growth in terms of his foresight, insane growth in terms of his Bifrost-like ability that allows him to engulf power within his, well, his weaponry. And on top of that, just his movement and also his, his technique becomes even more flawless something that they really wanted to work on for him and there's just benefits for everyone around him on top of that everyone's getting stronger and throughout the next couple days everyone gets far far more powerful the only problem is bakugo and it's not because he's not getting more powerful because he is but his powers seem to truly be messing with his body and Azuku is worried about something. He knows that he has All Might's power. He knows that he's the successor of All Might. What, what happens when one for all is within somebody that already has a quirk? What happens when one for all is within somebody that's quirk is powerful on its own? Is it going to strain their body tenfold faster than they possibly could believe? He's not so sure. He's not. But he's worried. It definitely worries Azuku because there is really no way around it. It seems like Bakugo is heading quicker to the grave than, than anybody else around them. Power always comes at a cost. And there's always that cost. Azuku keeps this to himself for now. But he decides he's going to bring this up to All Might when he gets the chance. But that chance to tell All Might... Would, would come a lot slower, you could say, or a lot more in the future than you could possibly imagine. Because one night, Azuku is out training on his own, and he hears a rustle in the grass. And let's just say he's an instantly attacked. Attacked by a ton of people. A ton. The League of Villains have arrived for Azuku himself. And well... The training alone allows him to in incapacitate multiple of them, but it doesn't matter. He gets burned relatively badly, and he gets thrown into a, this marble-like thing, and they're ta he's taken away. Taken away without a notice. And the next morning, Aizawa is questioning where Azuku is, and they all in the, in the forest training camp have a bad feeling, because Azuku has just been captured and is currently with the League of Villains. And something tells Aizawa that whatever happened to him and wherever he went, it was not only by force, but they want him for a whole different reason. They want his quirk. They don't want his allegiance. They want his power. What's going to happen to Azuku? Are they going to take control over his mind? Are they going to make him into a weapon? A slave? What are they going to do? Well, you'll have to find out. Find out in part 5 of What If Deku Had a Foresight Quirk. And here we are. Here. We. Are. Azuku Midoriya is just taken out of this small little marble, strapped to his seat, and unable to move. Azuku ponders what's going on and he begins to look around to see that there is a ton a ton of villains around him izuku slightly mocks all of them saying that they really wasted his his time and their own time so they should just hurry up with whatever they have planned they kind of laugh at izuku saying that they have all the leverage and what they're going to do is turn him into a weapon but more importantly They'll turn him into a perfect weapon. Just like Kurogiri, just like the Nomus, he'll they'll be the he'll be the very own Nomu that they've been looking for. One that can see into the future 
one that could read everything. Azuku begins to laugh once again. You all are real idiots. It's, it's ironic, frankly. You know, I can't necessarily see into the future, right? It's not that simple. No? Based on how dumb your faces look right now, I assume that you had no idea. But still, how could I blame you? Azuku kind of continues to mock them, but then gets burned by Dobby's flames. He shuts up for a second and just stares at them as he begins to heal the wound that was just given to him. Azuku shakes his head and says that they gave him way too much time. He shows his hands and the, the anklet and also the wrist, the wrist restraints are no longer on him. He stands up as they try to fight him, but he quickly is able to dodge and get out of the way as he kicks through the door that's right in front of him. As he sprints through that door, he sprints through an alleyway, closely pursued by many others. A portal opens up right in front of him, but he was able to predict this relatively easily as he dodges it, going to the side of the portal and slightly climbing a building to get away. As Azuku is basically getting away, he's in hot pursuit or the the villains are in hot pursuit of him but as Azuku turns the corner there are a ton of heroes waiting Gran Torino comes soaring in kicking a ton of the villains as All Might himself charges in as well many others to follow Azuku is shocked to see this and slightly smirks saying that they really didn't stand a chance in the first place but he would bite those words and or, or he would eat those words very soon because a portal would open up underneath him and send him off. He would be so confused. Where is he? Why did they send him here? As he sees a portal open up and as the League of Villains arrive as well, but they seem just as confused. Azuku can feel this presence directly behind him. As he turns, there it is. All for one. He's shocked to see this, but all for one tells him that he's the key. The key to unlocking everything for them. All for one reaches out and grabs Azuku by the arm and grabs him then by the neck, telling him that this will be the last time he'll see true freedom, that unfortunately he'll be needed for something far, far greater that's to come. Azuku struggles and tries to get out, and he can see his, his life flashing before his eyes. He needs to unhinge his this hand from his neck as soon as possible. He needs to. He needs to. He needs to. He's passing out. All of all of it, the oxygen in his lungs are depleting, and then eventually his eyes would dim. Passing out, but then out of nowhere, a punch would come straight to the face of All for One, sending him flying. Azuku would fly off to the ground. As he's caught by somebody he reawakens and he breathes he breathes in a deep sigh of relief and he stands his ground standing still he looks behind him to see that it was Gran Torino who caught him someone that he personally has not trained with but he's heard good things about Gran Torino pulls something out of his pocket and throws it up as he does it lands straight on Azuku's shoulders and on top of that he throws a tiny pen it seems as Azuku grabs it and presses the button on the pen to extract the, well, the, 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 the place where you write on it, but it actually turns into his bow staff. Azuku smirks a little bit and looks at Gran Torino as he takes off to help all the other heroes in whatever fight they need to fight. All the Nomus and so on and so forth. Azuku slowly walks toward the battlefield as the League of Villains are all there, all there fighting. And Azuku is pissed. He is livid. All the League of Villains are standing right there. And they believe that this is the perfect time to get to get Azuku and take him away. But Azuku standing there. His eyes even darker of a purple. His body language looks petrifying. He looks petrifying. He walks forward toward them. And Shigaraki and many others that are standing in front of them. Toga, Dabi, and all the others, they don't stand a chance. Every move they take, every single little flinch, 
Azuku sees it all, slamming his bow staff so hard into the neck of Shigaraki that it sends him flying, knocking him out cold. Dobby shoots flame straight at him, but Azuku spins his bow staff so fast that he's able to deflect the flames. A knife comes from Toga trying to stab Azuku in the side, but he grabs the knife and redirects it back at her, forcing her to dodge as he kicks her directly in the face, sending her toward a building. Azuku tells them that this fight is over, that it's all over. As he says this, he screams, and all, all he can hear in his mind, and out of reflex alone to the voice that he hears in his head, he says these words, slow down. As he says this, everything around him feels slow, motionless. He walks forward as if he's walking forward normally, and in a matter of a split second, he destroys multiple limbs of the people in front of him, and the League of Villains collapse, all of them on the ground as he sticks his bow staff in the ground, and he begins to basically pant out of exhaustion. A portal opens up, sucking all the League of Villains away as Azuku throws his bow staff trying to stop one of them to at least, at least capture one of them, but he can't. He unfortunately misses and he's unable to capture them. Azuku is pissed, frustrated, but at the same time, he doesn't know what else to say. But luckily, they're able to have some of these villains captured. Not all of them, of course, but some that are pretty, pretty crucial. One is Kurogiri, of course, and everyone else that got captured originally. But Azuku would then grab the bow staff that's on the ground, shrink it back to, to its pen size, and he looks up, and when he does, he sees All Might and All for One clashing still, going head to head. All for One looks to end All Might here and now. Azuku knows that he has nowhere near the strength, nowhere near the power to keep up at this moment but still it doesn't matter azuku limps his way off and he's helped by gran torino and many others to get out of there and luckily he does just that they bring him to a hospital a hospital where he's safe and sound gran torino even commends him saying that he's hell of a fighter especially someone that has that many techniques and that can master so many weaponry or weapons and weaponry so quickly it feels that there's an unfair advantage in a way. Azuku shakes his head and asks how All Might is. And of course, the same result happens. Yes, All for One is defeated. Yes, everything seems to have went okay, but the retirement All for One, or the retirement of All Might is still fulfilled. And unfortunately, the symbol of peace will feel extremely weakened in that regard. Nonetheless though, it's okay. Azuku sees that there is more to All Might than meets the eye. He is truly a teacher and truly someone that can work with them and get them stronger. And that's all Azuku can think about. He's able, he was able to take down the, the basically a syndicate of, of Le the League of Villains, able to take them down alone. Of course, he was enraged and it also took basically awakening a brand new ability for him to even take them down, but he can feel it. He can feel that this ability is something that is going to be around for a while. Something that he needs to master. And that is to slow down time itself. It's crazy. His foresight quirk is evolving at rapid speeds. It's no longer something as simple as foresight. Yes, he can see people, what they're going to do, their emotions that always lead to a certain outcome. But now his quirk is far more. His quirk is evolved far greater than he could possibly imagine whatever it doesn't matter azuku continues his training and they do a bit of their little hero special move training of course but the main main thing that would eventually come would be the provisional hero licensing exam and yes this exam is relatively simple and relatively easy Frankly, especially for someone like Azuku, when they all arrive, there's really nobody that's truly their friend. Azuku makes this clear to the entirety of Class 1A. But on top of that, Azuku knows that once they get in there, whatever they gotta do, it's going to be easy, simple, 
that everyone's going to come after them, but Izuku and his whole class have trained for this specifically. So when the first event for the provisional hearing licensing exam begins and you have to tag people with these red dodgeballs of some sorts, Azuku knows that it'll be simple and quick for at least him. Before anybody could really even attack them, Azuku immediately finds a couple people eliminating them. But as he looks over the horizon, he sees that a ton, a ton of people are coming after Class 1A. He's about to tag the person that he's actually about to finish off, but he decides not to. He says that he'll be back later. That if he's here, or if they're not here, so be it. He doesn't care anyways. Azuku would head over to exactly where his class is, and he'd put his whole class in position to win with ease. He would slow down time after working on it for the last couple days, and he'd tag out people, or at least get two tags on them, where the third tag, it would be easy, basically easy as heck to get them out. They would have such an advantage that Izuku was setting them up for that it would be very, very, very simple to get anybody else out that needed to get out. Azuku would tag his last person, head off the stage, and would allow the, his class and trust his class to finish off what they needed to finish off. After waiting in the waiting room, he would see his whole class eventually arrive, and he knew that this, exact, this is exactly what would occur. For the next part, they have a bit of a rescue type of, of exam. Of course, they haven't worked on rescue very much, but Izuku knows that they should have a good bit of success nonetheless. So during this time and during this, well, working at this rescue training, he goes around and helps people out find the best pathways to actually to save people. And this overall helps how fast they begin rescuing and saving as many people as possible. And it also gives Azuku a lot of, well, points. It gives him a ton of points for for passing this so-called exam. And after they're done for about about 10 minutes of just rescuing people, the alarms begin to sound. To sound. It seems as if there's a villain attack. Well, yeah. It's Gang Orca and a bunch of fake villains that are going to basically be their shoe-in for a villain raid. So the villains come storming in, and some of the students feel that they can do it all on their own, and when they try, let's just say it goes really downhill. Azuku kind of knew that would happen, just out of normal occurrences, many of the heroes or the uh, student heroes at this moment are pretty cocky and over their heads. And that's a lot coming from Azuku himself, because he is cocky, and well, sometimes over his head. Not all the time though. Of course, though, Azuku helps out where he can, and when Gang Orca finally approaches, Azuku would take that stand and would go one on one with Gang Orca, while the while Inasa and Todoroki are trying to figure out what they're going to do with themselves. They're having their little disputes, Todoroki and Inasa, and Azuku tells them to stop being idiots as he looks at as he looks at Todoroki. And he tells them, or tells him, that they've been working on stuff like this all the time, working together. As disgusting as it sounds coming from his own mouth, it's true. Azuku tells Todoroki to stop being an idiot and stop doing stupid stuff like this, and that they'll actually win, especially against a pro hero like Gang Orca. Azuku would stand his ground, and as he does, well... The fire and wind would then surround Gang Orca entirely. Azuku would, would tell them to basically continue this. And, and as he watches from inside, with his in, basically with good eyesight, Azuku looks as Gang Orca is pulling out water that's going to rehydrate him and get him out of there. He predicts where that water is going to be pulled out from as he throws his spear through it or his bow staff. And as he throws the bow staff through it, it more or less penetrates through the bottle and completely destroys all or basically leaks out all the water that Gang Orca was going to use, forcing Gang Orca to force and brute force his way out of the fire wind vortex. And when he tries, Gang Orca is completely dried out and he collapses to the ground, completely out cold. Azuku smirks as the plan worked exactly how he thought it would. The fire vortex would have got it done, but every pro hero has a backup plan. But if he doesn't have a backup plan to his backup plan, 
well, it's not going to go too well. Because a Zuku can see three to five to seven, whatever how many steps you can think of ahead of anybody he's in front of. And that works perfectly in this scenario. This would eventually lead to the sirens singing once again. And it would be called that it's over. The, ex the exam is now officially came to its conclusion. And everybody's scores will be evaluated and put up on a big screen soon to come. After a while, after, and after a while of waiting, the screen would show up. And the screens would show that only two people actually didn't pass. That being Inasa and Todoroki, Bakugo actually passing in this regard. And the main reason why he passed was actually just some relation and more relation to All Might and also Azuku himself. Azuku is a cocky, cocky guy, of course, but they had a more of a respectful relationship in a way. And in terms of All Might, All Might would make it clear that these, all these things get evaluated and he needs to tone down his temper. And he did it just enough and did just enough basically to help out that it didn't matter that he was a little bit rowdy. So luckily Bakugo this time around actually is good. He actually gets his provisional hero license. With that all said and done though, the next day at school, they would learn about the reason why they need these provisional hero licenses. They actually are trying to get into a work study. And a work study is something that the big three are going to talk about. The big three begin to speak about these so-called work studies, but it eventually leads to Mirio saying that he's going to fight everybody. And when he does, he absolutely dominates. Yeah, but dominates everyone except for Zuku and Bakugo. Their teamwork is something that is pretty damn good. Something that was even able to keep up with All Might. On top of that, Azuku and Bakugo have become so much stronger to this point that Mirio is not unpredictable. Azuku could predict exactly what Mirio is going to do and try to find openings in his quirk. Don't get me wrong, Mirio's quirk is extremely, extremely powerful, but Azuku being that far ahead of, of everyone and, look, and looking seven to eight steps ahead of Mirio, he's easily able to keep up with Mirio even if it's not through raw speed, it's just through raw reaction. In which this does impress Mirio really like, a lot, and everyone is shocked to see this, especially after how everyone got destroyed by him. He doesn't beat Mirio by any means, but he's able to keep up, and it kind of goes into a stalemate. But even Aizawa knows that if Azuku really, really wanted this fight to be over, it would have been over already. Mirio has no clue. And even Aizawa hints at that later on, and Mirio is shocked to hear it. What kind of power does this kid have? He knew that he had some power, or had some real, real raw strength in terms of his quirk and various other things. But how technically, technically flawless is this kid? Well, that's a question that maybe he'll be able to see eventually, especially because All Might decides to bury the hatchet a little bit and speak with Sir Nighteye. But that's more speaking with Sir Nidai on the on the on the regard for Bakugo and Azuku. He wants both of them to go to Sir Nidai's agency because he feels that there is a positive outcome to come. That if both of them work together and if they continue to work together, Bakugo will will basically transcend far faster than than anybody can possibly believe. And on top of that, Azuku brings the best in a way out of Bakugo brings the most power out of Bakugo and maybe maybe a Bakugo can truly basically figure out one for all to its fullest capacities something that All Might was never able to do so their next challenge is with Sir Nidai Sir Nidai's agency and soon they'll figure out that their next challenge is with Overhaul and the Shia Hazaikai Azuku and Bakugo arrive at Sir Nidai's agency, an agency that they are super, really excited to work for. Frankly, this agency is one of the best, if not the best, in the entirety of Japan, so working with Sir Nidai and learning under him would definitely have its benefits. But they'll definitely be doing very, very different things, you could say. 
Azuku would be helping more with Sir Nidai, more with finding the Shiha Zaikai because of just his crazy intelligence, his own foresight ability, and so on and so forth. But Bakugo will do more field work, and he's actually quickly tested by Sir Nidai to see if he's really worthy, and eventually he would prove that he's somewhat worthy. But still, it's, it's something that Sir Nidai knew that Bakugo would be ready for, because Bakugo actually was pretty, pretty good bits of head of Azuku compared to Canon at this point. Obviously, Bakugo would be pretty well off or basically in a good spot in terms of just how strong he currently is, and he would be able to keep up with Sir Nidai pretty well. All that is said and done, well, Azuku begins to work with Sir Nidai, and they get the rundown of basically what's going on with the Shia Hazaikai. Zuku helps with the research and trying to find them, as Mirio, Mirio Togata, other known as Lamillion, and Katsuki Bakugo begin to go on patrols. These patrols would allow them to search certain areas of, of Japan to see if they can even catch a glimpse of Overhaul. He has to be out and about somewhere. I mean, the leader of the Shiha Zaikai needs to be doing certain things here and there, right? Let's just say they kind of, in a way, lucked out. Because during a patrol where Bakugo and Mirio were out and about, let's just say what happened was shocking. Overhaul showed his face, and not only that, he had a young child with him that was being tortured, hurt, used for experiments. But Mirio toned down the situation and allowed Overhaul to, to go, to leave in which this infuriated Bakugo. Bakugo said that they could have beat him right then and right there, but now they gave him a chance to leave, to go away. This isn't something that he signed up for. He needed, They needed to take him down then and there. But when they got back, of course, Nidai did say that that was the best choice, was to let him go. They don't, they don't know what type of horrible things he would have done and what kind of carnage he would have brought to the area around them. But after Azuku hears this, he begins to use as much information as he can to find the base of the Shia Hazaikai, finding it far earlier than, than what Nidai could have done himself. Azuku is extremely intelligent, and so is Sir Nidai, but Azuku kind of is just raw talent. He, he finds the location, and they begin to have their meetings to find out exactly what they're going to do. Azuku wants to be on the task force to help them to make sure that everything goes correct, but Sir Nida is not so sure if that's the best choice of action. That Azuku could be on comms and give them something that they truly need, their eyes in the sky. But Azuku says that he's been training for this specifically. He's been working for this specifically. He knows he had his weaknesses in terms of combat because of certain quirks or certain things that would happen, and raw power would put him put him at a, at a disadvantage but that's a long time ago he's far from that now that they that he needs to let or they need to let him be be truly involved in which eventually Sir Nidai agrees to this a task force of Azuku of Bakugo Mirio Nejire Tamaki and many many other pro heroes would then get gather get ready and early morning would get set to invade the base of the Shia Hazaikai to find overhaul they get ready and when they arrive at the base they are immediately attacked by a giant monster of a, a giant monster that looks like a giant man and the the rest of the heroes while some of them stay outside and attack this, this giant man will head inside azuku mirio and bakugo relatively stay together as they move throughout the area Azuku being able to find the best pathways to get to get to exactly where Overhaul is. On top of that, Mirio is able to get ahead with his quirk. With that done, and Azuku, Bakugo, and Mirio heading up, they're able to eventually find where Overhaul is, and eventually they are they're able to find it together. Together, they they all run after Overhaul, and their insane fight would begin. Overhaul had a couple cronies here and there to help him out. 
but it was mainly just overhaul. The reason for this was he was trying to escape. He was trying to escape with Eri, Mirio, Bakugo, and now Azuku. Now they have to make their choice. They need to get Eri out of there as soon as possible. One of them has to leave, and eventually it would be it would be chosen that Bakugo takes Eri and and goes away as quick as possible. At the end of the day. Bakugo is extremely fast, maybe even faster than Mirio, and Azuku can read the movements of, well, Overhaul relatively easily too. So they decide to stick together, and Mirio and also Azuku begin to work together. Mirio says that it's going to be difficult, that they don't know each other's patterns and fighting abilities exactly straight up to the T, but they should be able to figure something out. But Azuku tells him that he'll f that that all he needs to do is fight exactly how he normally fights. That's it. He promises that he'll keep up, and on top of that, he'll make sure everything is in sync. Mirio is shocked to hear this, but it does make sense. Azuku's quirk is built for this, is made for something just like this. So when they begin to fight Overhaul, all of their movements seem to be completely in sync. It seems like Overhaul doesn't or won't stand a chance at all. It's just an easy fight for them. They completely pick him apart, completely obliterate Overhaul. That's until Azuku looks into Overhaul's eyes and sees something, sees something that's about to happen. Azuku then turns to his side slightly to see someone else there as he reaches out his hands and a bullet sound rings out. Mirio stands there in shock, in complete and utter shock, thinking the bullet missed. Oh my god, it must have backloaded, it must have, something must have happened. What happened? That's not what happened. Actually, what happened was that Izuku, just in time, slowed down, well, time. And he stopped and moved the bullet and moved Mirio just out of the way, just enough. And the bullet went soaring to overhaul, landing right on his leg and erasing his quirk. Azuku sh shakes his head and taunts overhaul and even taunts the other guy, laughing at them, making fun of them, telling them that they failed and they just could not predict what was to come and they could not predict how strong students would be students that aren't even full-fledged heroes yet it's truly sad truly sad azuku knocks out overhaul and then sub subdues the other person as well and they cuff them up and get them ready to go bakugo blasts into the room to see that the fight is already over he remarks that it's that's lame that he wanted to fight too, but Mirio is shocked. Mirio is taken back by a large, large portion. Az Azuku was able to do this practically on his own, but in a way, it did help having Mirio here. It did help and give openings that Azuku wouldn't have had on his own. With that said, though, that doesn't necessarily matter in the grand scheme of things. We did save someone by the name of Sir Night Eye, of course, and luckily more things will fall in place. Sir Night Eye survives and doesn't die to overhaul. Mirio does not lose his quirk, but all that does matter is that Eri, Eri, the one that was experimented on, tortured, and so on and so forth, they are safe, or she is safe. They all head back to the agency and victory is in sight. A flawless one at that something that they weren't really expecting in a way they were all prepared to lose something someone or even themselves that is something that needs to be basically registered in one's mind when you are fighting as a hero in this type of climate azuku continues to work with sir Nidai and would continue to work with sir Nidai for a while same thing with bakugo they would all work with sir Nidai throughout this time but then lead them lead them to basically having their class 1a versus class 1b bit of training session 
And this training session would be really, really simple. For one, Bakugo is far stronger. Far, far stronger. And on top of that, he's going to be able to blast through everyone there without hesitation. Azuku foresees everything. His, his team would easily win, and flawlessly at that. Azuku would see and foresee everything that is to come, stop everything, and even with Monoma copying his quirk, it wouldn't matter. Azuku's experience, Azuku's use of, of Aizawa's scarf, and the use of his metal bow staff that continues to get upgraded, well, is just too much. Way too much for everyone, everyone there. With that done, and with Class 1A winning the day, there's far, far greater and far, far more terrifying things ahead. Those things that are terrifying and those things that are ahead, well, those are known, or that is known as war. Japan will be under siege. All for one seeks his revenge and seeks to escape and Shigaraki the successor of all for one wants to be the reason for it they may have gotten away and they may have been slowed down by Izuku all might and many of their efforts but it doesn't mean they'll stop villain society never stops all might may have lowered the rates of villains drastically but nothing stands to a complete halt and they realize that very very quickly from endeavors fight with the high-end nomu from the first conflict with a nomu all of that all of that has led to war and war is what endeavor finds out from hawks secretly hawks gives endeavor a notice and everyone else is put on notice as well giving them about two months before the war and siege on Japan and the villains bring an army they have two months to prepare prepare the students prepare the heroes and get ready to stop all of this now will they be able to stop it that's a story for another day and another time like I said once the anime is finished up with this season I will definitely be going into the war arc but I always say that the war arc is going is far different when you have certain scenarios like this. And sometimes the war arc doesn't even happen because of, well, strength disparity. But in this case, it definitely would. But this will be the end of the what if for now. And maybe, maybe, just maybe I'll come back after season, I believe it's six, is finished and done for the anime. But still, I decided this, this is where I'll end it. And I hope you all enjoyed nonetheless. And I hope y'all enjoyed this series. And I hope y'all keep enjoying my videos. And I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.